All right. Good morning, everybody. June 2nd, um, much uh, anticipated Excel workshop. So uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Mary Kate Sumner. Uh, Mary Kate, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, goodness. Okay. So I'm Mary Kate Sumner. I work at South Arkansas Community College in El Dorado, Arkansas. And I am. I've worked in the um, working, I've been working with Excel pretty heavily for the last five years. I've been here for five years and um, been just kind of trained in different situations. And I've done a little bit of um, what I would say corporate education training with Excel, tips and tricks and things like that. And I guess I did this in November with y'all. Is that right, Dawn? Maybe. That is because if you remember, uh, <laughs> you were teaching your workshop when my first grandbaby yes. was born at home. Yes. <laughs> surprise in the middle of the night and I was like ah, I'm glad you're here Mary Kate see you <laughs> yeah it we was, were, it was we kind were, of interesting <laughs> we were so excited but uh yeah welcome back um so same situation uh um uh, folks I mean, th these folks all work with Excel um so this is going to be just kind of a a, a but at varying levels and in, and in different tools uh like when I I went over basic chart types I don't think anybody's really charting much. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, I saw you had that um, in your materials. So if we could just hit, hit that briefly as well, as far as just, you know, modifying uh, uh, chart elements. Um, but yeah, uh, same situation. People are using Excel to, to do the usual uh, 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 tabular um, sorting and filtering and, and uh, wrangling. Um, but we, I want to make sure everybody's up to, the level that you teach um, so that when we go to use it next week, uh, everybody's basically on the, on the same page. So I'm going to hush good. and I'm going to watch as opposed to try and follow along because I like, I can't do both. I like watching your screen and then going back and doing the hands-on kind of while I can pause the video. Um, so if you guys have limited screen real estate as well, um, you're welcome to, to, follow along or not, however, um, you're most comfortable absorbing the material. Okay. Oh, um, I can't screen share yet. Oop, that's because I have to uh, go into advanced sharing options and say multiple participants can blah, blah, who can share? No, nope. uh, all participants who can start sharing with someone else is sharing. Yeah, we'll do that one too. So you should be enabled now. Okay, I'm gonna try this way. Let's see. Okay. I, am, right. I see Excel. Do you see my mouse? I can see your pointer. Move it around a little bit. Is it? Um, no, nope, you, you can't see it. Okay. Yeah. So I need to share. You can, I, can you see the green circle around it? Not so much. I just okay. see your pointer, and then you know if you move it, it it kind of frames and. Right. Isn't so visible. I want to do this then. Is there a mouse option that makes it more visible in Zoom? Uh, no. Do you see this now? I do. Okay, perfect. I remember last time I had it all set up and I was like, oh, cool. I have my pointer all set up and y'all well, couldn't how, see it. How'd you <laughs> do that? Remember. Um, I have a program I bought. It's called, uh, it's called um, Pointer Focus. It costs like $12, but you can like share it with anybody. So if you like it, I can give it to you. Pointer focus. Uh, I might use that. Yeah, that might come in handy when I'm yeah. uh, poking on uh, stuff. Uh, it, yeah, that's I cool. think it's helpful, especially if you're in a big classroom. I don't know how much it's helpful on here. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, okay, so wanted to start off with a couple of things. This file, um, I think uh, Don uploaded it to y'all's um, group thing um and um it has a lot of instructions on it so right now what i'm going to do is get rid of the instructions for myself so i can play with it a little bit easier but um at the top of almost every page there's some type of instructions or um in, in each tab sorry um sheet let me put it that way sheet um there are instructions and you can you know copy and paste them onto something else so you can use the um spreadsheet a little bit easier for yourself I'm one of those people that would rather have all my information at the very top right hand uh, left corner um, so I can adjust everything easier. Um, but some people are different. 
um, and prefer whatever they want. So I'm going to start with in removing these. And so before um, the, I'm going to go over a couple of things. I know you have to all know what rows and columns are, but I want to make sure you do know that. So on the left, the numbers are the rows. If you hear me say the row of number, uh, if a certain number, please remember that's the left side and it's the numbers, okay? And then the columns go by the letters. And I'm just telling you that just because some people might not realize that. So I wanna make sure you knew that. Um, so I'm gonna highlight all of these. And then because I don't want anything but my actual table up there, I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna delete that and get rid of it. That's for myself, not for y'all today. Um, so uh, I also wanted to kind of go over a couple of other things real quick. One thing that if you don't know this, um, quick, uh, quick little information like keystrokes, control, shift, and arrow down. If you're at the top of A and you hit control, shift, and arrow down, it will highlight all the information in that column. Um, if you hit control, shift, and to the right, it'll go all the way uh, to the other columns. Now, I will say this, if you erase, like, um, I, I didn't get all my tabs in it, there we go. If you erase a um, column header or something and you go control shift and arrow to the right, it will only go to the next blank one. So just be aware if you have any blanks, it won't always pick up everything. So make sure that when you're doing that, um, you, uh, you make sure you have, you know, your fit, your blanks are filled in with the full first, the column that you start with and the row that you start with. Okay. I'm going to back off all that. Okay. Um, so another thing that some people might not realize about is you can color your sheet tabs at the bottom. Um, you can add tabs at the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So if you go down to your tab at the bottom, your sheet name, where it says like main practice, right click and choose insert or um, yeah, insert. You can add a worksheet and hit okay. You can also go over to the right side of all of those. There's a little plus sign over to the right and you can add another sheet there. And it'll always pop up kind of where you are. So sheet one or sheet two, it'll come up with the new name sheet one or sheet two. And then um, if you right click, you can rename it, or if you double click in it, um, it'll darken it and you can write, you know, you can name it a different name. Um, and then you can also change the color, which is kind of helpful. So like if you're working on a lot of sheets and you're trying to, and, and they're all similar named, you know, maybe um, if you're finished with them, you can turn them to green or something like that. Or if you want to be able to say, hey, go to the green sheet tab, tab, sheet tab, then that's helpful as well. But yeah, you can change the sheet. Now it doesn't show up as much when you're on it, but when you get off of it, you can see it shows up very clearly. Okay. And if y'all can't see anything or can't hear me very well, or it's confusing, please speak up and just say anything because I'll stop real quickly and go over it again. Okay, so... Um, I wanted to make sure y'all knew about those little simple things because I felt like last time I didn't go over that and some people just might not know it. Um, it's one of those things I think people know, but they really don't. And then you can also delete the tabs. You can drag your tabs around. And another thing is you can copy your tabs or move them. So when you right click on the tab, on the sheet tab, go to move or copy. And it gives you an option. If you're yeah, it says two book. This is the book you're in. So this is the workbook I'm already in currently. I can move it around in that workbook or I can create a copy in the workbook or I can move it to another workbook or to a brand new workbook. And just remember though, when you do this, if you're wanting to create a copy, click create a copy before you choose your location. Because if not, you'll pull it out of your workbook and then you don't realize you've lost it. Um, so make sure you hit create a copy first and then choose your location. I feel like they should have moved that to the top because, <laughs> you know, instruction wise in my mind, that's the best way for me to remember how to do it. So you can do that. If you do to a new workbook, it pulls it out and puts it on top of all your other ones. So when you look at the top, it'll say book one. And at the bottom, it'll have your same tab name, your sheet name. 
Okay. I'm going to exit out of that real quick. Don't save. Um, so just remember all that. Uh, they're very helpful. Some people just don't realize that that's available and, um, and, and they do it different ways and everybody learns differently. So um, that's some good and hopefully helpful information. information. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go over some conditional formulas real quick. Um, one conditional formula is some if, and you can do that with, um, I'm gonna just go over some if, and just remember you can do the same type of thing with like average if and everything, okay? So some if, since we're going to add a whole lot of uh, information together, I'm gonna use column E. Um, and so I'm highlighting it so you can see a little bit easier. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of it. And this is just because this is how I have, set, have this set up. And we're gonna do equals some if, and you can type it in, or I'll show you another way in just a second. So if you're typing in, when you get to that, you can either double click on here or you can hit the tab button, okay? So you could double click on the choice or you can hit the tab button and then it's ready for your information, okay? So right now it's looking for the range. So we're gonna go back up to the top and we're ranging um, all of this. This is our range of information that it's looking at, okay? So uh, don't include the, the where, where we're equally, don't including where the sum is going to be, okay? And then it's going to, then we're gonna place the comma. The next one's going to be criteria. And we're gonna choose, um, let's do greater than um, uh, 20,000, let's do that. So I'm gonna use the, um, you got to use quotation marks. So quote greater than 20,000 in quote comma. And I think, nope, I did that wrong. Of course I did it wrong. Not when I was talking to you. There it is. Okay. Okay. So there's a space between the greater than and uh, the 20,000. And then I just don't add the extra comma. Okay. So that would be is adding up all the information that's greater than 20,000 together. Okay. Okay. You can do that with average some uh, average if as well. Okay. Um, we're also going to use there's a version called countif. Countif will count certain information. Um, so like on, we're gonna use the state information here. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Oh. I'm gonna go fast because last time nobody had a lot of questions. So if you have anything, just speak up when I ask, okay? <laughs> um, we're gonna go to this state column, highlighting it just so y'all can watch a little bit easier. And let's say I'm trying to find out how many um, of our states in this specific information, um, this specific table or group of information um, includes the um, Massachusetts MAs, okay? But I don't wanna have to go through and count them up or I don't wanna, we're not making a pivot table with this one. We're just wanting to go really quickly with this, okay? But you don't know what pivot tables are probably, but if you do, you'll learn. If you don't, you will soon. <laughs> so um, at the bottom, we're just gonna do equals countif. Tab the range. Okay, comma. And we're going to do MA with the quotes and enter. And we have four MAs in that count in that column. Now I will say this: if you don't have specifically only MA, it might not read it right. So if you're looking for something that might have an MAT in it, or, and you're looking for only MA, just remember, it's gonna pick up, it's gonna pick it up differently. I'm not saying it'll always pick up like MAT if you're looking for MA, um, but it will pick up your information wrong. So make sure the information you have in that column um, is pretty, um, 
specific if that makes sense and there's not multiples that could be messed you know um i don't know the right word i'm sorry um it needs to be you know like if you have the word math and you have the word mathematics you don't want to look for math if that makes sense i hope that makes sense on that um because it's not specifically separated it could pick up all of them at the same time and you might not want that so, um okay so let's delete that i'm gonna unhighlight that um, okay. um another thing is um count a oh let me let me show you this uh so i was telling you i would show you how to do it another way so that is if you do equals and then count if and you type in count if because you know what you're looking for um okay that's one way okay the other way is to go to the formula uh tab formulas tab click insert function and at the top type in um count if or count a we're going to try count a and hit go it'll pull up count a and it'll tell you what it's looking for okay counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty for count a okay so let's say we want to do that one we hit okay it puts it in there for us um counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty value one um you would be able, i'm pretty sure you would do the whole cell area and then value two and then it hit okay yeah so all these cells are not empty okay so same thing with insert function count blank and it counts the number of empty cells in a specific range of cells. So you go to one spot, you um, put in counts a blank, and then you do a range, and you'll see if you have any blanks. And that's just a quick way of seeing that. Okay. While you're on Same that, thing. Go ahead. While you're on that topic, Mary Kate, mm -hmm. uh, go back to the insert function, if you would. Sure. And and I want to. So that is like a Google search. So you could type in the word like, like look space up. I want to do a look up and I don't remember V or X look up or index or match or any of that stuff. So look up now hit go and see what, ah, there you go. So it's yeah. like a, without having to go out to Google. So cool. I don't generally use that button. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And, um, and yeah, and, and, and it provides going this direction if you don't remember how or how a function really works it go it's a lot easier because it kind of walks you through it now sometimes it's not super clear um, especially if you've never used it before so i would still suggest that sometimes you might have to go to google a little bit to see exactly how to use specific functions but um, on the other hand most of the time it's pretty clear um, and we will go over related to that we will go over match and vlookup and i've never personally used xlookup except for once xmatch or hlookup so I actually would like, I'm probably going to have to look into those since I've never, since we just talked, we just pulled those up. Um, but, um, but we'll go over actually over those. But yeah, some of that stuff, um, it's easy to understand what you're looking for, but other times it's not anyway. So um, let's see. Okay. So another thing I like to use, and like I said, a lot of these are quick tips. So like, that's something I could use if I'm just looking at something quickly on the spreadsheet. Um, if you're looking throughout some inform, you know, different information. Um, but and the next type of thing I like to use is concatenate um, functions. And that is when you add different columns together, together to um, equal a new column. Um, one of the, I do that a lot with names. A lot of times our information comes um, separate, our names are separated. Um, and then I'll also do that with like city and state, or if you're formatting something to do like a, um, a label or address, like do labels for address labels or for a letter, um, which many of you probably won't do that. But if you do, um, just know that this is where that comes in handy. You can you can bring them all together if you want to. So a concatenate function, um, what I usually do is just equals and I go to, I'm going to pull New York and New York. I'm going to pull the city and state together. Okay. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. So the first way is um, we're going to click on B2, and then we're going to do the and sign. And um, I'm going to have a comma 
So you can use, you'll use the quotes. The quotes will be either for a space or a comma or anything like that. So anything, if you're any type of word you want to add um, that are not actually in the cells. So any type of thing that you want to add that's not actually in the cell, you put it in the quotes. So quote, comma, quote, and quote space, quote, and New York. And then look at it to see if you like how it looks. If it's not how you look like how it looks, you go back and fix it. But as you can see, I added a comma and I added a space. You have to put an and sign in between each item that you're adding. And then of course, click on the cells that you're wanting to add. Okay. Now I don't have any filters turned on. Um, so what I can do is a quick fill, which is you double click here on the edge. There's a little box that pops up. You double click on it and it'll pull it all the way down. Okay. Um, now, if I want it to stay looking like that, I'll right click, copy, right click again, and paste values. And what that does is it takes out that formula that I just created. Okay. So once again, we, we have created the formula. We've added the first cell and the second cell and added a comma and a space between them. There's no filters put on. So we're gonna drop it down and we wanna keep it the same information. So we'll right click, copy, right click, formula values. Now you can copy doing control C if you want, that's fine. But you don't wanna control V paste because it's gonna paste the formula. It won't paste the values, okay? So make sure you're pasting values. And as you can see, it took out that formula when we did that, okay? Uh, and that's for any type of thing that you're doing with formulas. Um, now, you don't always have to do that, obviously. I mean, if you're one of those that are needing the formula there that picks up data specifically, um, then leave it there. Um, but the more formulas have, the more formula you have, formulas you have in an Excel document, the um, bigger the, the file is. So if you don't need the formula, we always recommend getting rid of it for the fact of the size of the file, because you know that slows it down, as well as um, the chances of mistakes happening. So like if you accidentally forget, you make a change on another spreadsheet or you delete a sheet and that formula was connected to that sheet, then you have that oopsie, you know, that accidentally happened. So we wouldn't want that. Um, so just think about what you're doing. Uh, think, ask yourself questions. Do you need that formula or not? And then make that decision and that change. So another thing we're going to do, I'm going to right click here and insert another column. Another thing I'm going to do is show you how to do this a different way. So it's a quick fill as well. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's, it's a filling uh, automatic fill type thing. So if you type in, if you have a lot of information on two columns and you want things to be exactly the same way, like we did. Um, with the concatenate. You can also do it like this. You can type in New York, comma, space, NY, okay? And then Phoenix, you see how it did that? And then sometimes just hitting enter will drop it down. It'll make it the same. Now, if you make any changes, you know, it ends up being a questionable thing, but if everything stays the same and you want it the same, it will fill it down. And it doesn't make it into a formula. It just goes, it just quick fills all the way down. Okay. So once again, let's try that again. New York. Oops, sorry. And then, and then sometimes you have to go to the third one. I'm just giving you a heads up. You know how Excel can be. Hit enter and it goes all the way down. Okay. okay. So another cool thing that I've been using a lot more of is very similar. It's actually called a string text function. Um, a lot of times I will actually separate out text um, because I only need part of a, uh, of a column. Um, but um, I started using one of my colleagues was like, why don't you just use left or right more often instead of separate out the text? And I realized that, yeah, that makes it a lot quicker for me. So um, I try to become more efficient as quick, you know, when I can. And so, but it takes practice to do that. Um, you can't just learn one thing and then all of a sudden get used to it. Um, and, and just, you know, but you have to force yourself to do it every time and then you might be more efficient. So one of the things I'm gonna show you is, um, let's see, I'm trying to think. 
let's go with the sales, okay? I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna delete these other columns. The D and E that I just created, I'm gonna delete those to get them out of the way. We're gonna go to the next to sales and insert. And I'm gonna highlight that for you so you can watch that. Um, okay, so I'm going to pick out the right two numbers off of the sales. I wanna know what those right two numbers are for, for no reason really, but in this situation, I just need it. So I'm gonna type in equals R-I-G-H-T. And then we're going to hit tab and you're going to choose the actual, the cell that you're next to. Okay. And then you're going to hit comma and then you're going to choose how many numbers from the right that you want. So um, this is uh, 17,400. So in this case, I just want the two zero. So it's two, two points, two spots. So I'm just going to put a two in the parentheses and enter. Okay. And then there's no filters turned on. So I'm gonna do a quick fill drop down and it should pull all those out. And it just pulls out those right two items. What I use this for, um, and, and it, like I said, I don't know what you all do and I know it's data, but I just don't know exactly where you work. But like with our course information, we have a prefix code, we have a, a course number, and then we have a section number that comes out of our system that we use. And so I pull out the section number sometimes, or I'll pull out the prefix code. Um, and so the right or the left is very, very helpful in this situation. Hey, Mary so Kate, now I'm going to show you. Go ahead. I just wanted to um, just make sure everybody realizes if why it's so important to have the right data type associated with a column, because Mary Kate was able to do that because sales is formatted as like general, just as text. It's not formatted as a numeric. If it had been numeric, you might get, I think, some stranger results. Maybe it's possible. Yeah. Um, um, so that 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 it's a string because it's being treated like a string, just like we work with in Python. Um, it's working reliably like that. But uh, yeah, I get the same. Th I I use substringing like that because some of the invoices we get have like the first three characters coming from a, a particular business. They always use the same code like you know us something or uh inv something you know what i mean so so there's intelligence built into a column sometimes and the only way to extract that is yeah grabbing a certain number of characters or or checking to see if it is if that value is in that string right so related to what you just said i thought i'd try some two two different things out to kind of show so we did the letters the words over here and we just took out the first four on the left side of the names from A, column A. And then I went over to column E and F. And we're looking at, this is formatted as dates. Okay, so now I'm going to do a drop down. Sorry, that did not work. There it goes. Okay, drop down. So it pulls out a little bit different. Um. So like he said, yeah, I don't know what that reason, is. The, the right four characters of a date you would think in that format would be the year. But, right, but it doesn't because it's formatted as a date. And which, so when it pulls over, it doesn't know how to read that, I guess. It's some weird, um, yeah, string. Yeah, yeah, some some group of characters. But uh, right. So but there's just, there's a grab year. There's a there, there's lots of date formulas, date functions out there. So uh, you just got to know what you're looking for. Right, exactly. So just be aware what if like like you said, just kind of be aware of what you're doing and watch for yourself. Don't just assume what you're doing is right. Um, double check yourself. No, you're looking for the right three items. Go down and make sure all three right three items are correct. You know, double check yourself when you're doing stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So now related to dates, we'll delete these yellow ones out. Does anybody have any questions about that? By the way. All right, uh, I'm gonna insert next to the date area again. I like that. Um, so a uh, couple of things, just real quick. Um, if you're wanting to put the current date and time um, on, um, on a spreadsheet, you can just do a now formula. So equals now um, in the parentheses and it pulls it up currently, okay? Um, and then um, days, number of days between dates. So I can, you can determine the number of days between dates um, by adding, um, 
make sure you have two sets of dates. So usually you would try to have like a current, like a specific date related to your information. And then, so in this case, date of employment, okay? So, and then if we look at it as how long someone has been employed until today, we could do a six to 2022, okay? So we have dates. This is a good trick for you right here. I'm gonna let y'all see this. If I drag down, it goes ahead and put it in order. Heads, it goes ahead and put it in order. So we don't wanna do that. We want to copy at least two versions of the same date and then um, drag it down or double click it if you're not filtered, okay? Um, the reason why is it, it, it automatically starts reading um, numbers in order and puts numbers in order. So sometimes, I, what drives me insane is that sometimes we'll do it and sometimes it won't. But as a backup, what I try to do is just make sure when I'm doing um, a set of numbers, I always just, and I want it the same exact number, copy at least to the second or third and then drag all three at the same time. So you, you could do one or two or three, however you feel more comfortable and then drag or double click it all the way down. Okay. That's a good, that's a good point for, for all software, Mary Kate. You know how Word will auto format something and you're like, no, and yeah. Excel auto fills something and you're like, no. And in Python, when we're programming, you put in a left parenthesis, it sticks in a right parenthesis, even if you don't want it, want it. <laughs> it thinks it's helping. <laughs> so it seems like all, so all, all programmers writing software, uh, you know, think they're being helpful. And a lot of times we're, we're not. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So um, we're going to real quickly, I'm going to go over this one and then we'll probably take a break in just a minute. Um, so um, on this, you would do, I'm going to choose the word days. We're going to do equals days. Okay. So you have an end date, which is the most recent, and then the comma, and then it asks for the start date in parentheses. Okay. And it's going to pull up a date right now because that's what it's formatted on this column. So I'm going to go all the way down. And then we're going to go back and do um, general. And that's how many days from that day to that day. Okay. So 9,980 days between these two dates. Okay. Um, Related to that, you can also do um, net work days. So it would take out all your, um, I think it takes out all the Saturdays and Sundays because you know normally work days are Monday through Friday. And sometimes it'll take out um, holidays if you ask for it. So I'm gonna try that with you. Equals net work days, start date, end date, and any holidays that you wanna include. Let's just ignore holidays, okay? So we'll do a start date comma, end date, and just close. And so you can see that there's 9,980 days between these two dates, but there's 7,129 days from Monday through Friday. All right. <clears throat> and then there's another one that I always use. Um, you can also do a couple other ones. Um, I'd have to look them up. Um, but you can, uh, but one of the ones I use is not technically um, one of, it's not still in Excel anymore and it's called dated if. And sometimes it'll pull up, sometimes it, won't. it pulled up for me yesterday and I don't know why. If, let's see, there it is. Okay, dated if, and then it's um, this, comma, this, comma, I think, then it talks about on the right. So then you choose if you want to do like year or not. So we're going to do year with a Y. And let's change that to general. And I use that, and it, like I said, it's it's a formula that the newer Excels do not use anymore. Um, so you have to know it. Um, but what it does is it pulls up and tells you exactly how old somebody is. Um, and we use that um, uh, for uh, students to know how old a student is. Um, and so, and there's other formulas for that, but that's just one of my ones I'm used to. 
Um, so you just do a start date and end date and um, the in parentheses in quotes why, or you could do um, I'm adding um, a dollar sign to make it an absolute value um, for my formula. So when I, I'm going to drag the formula over to the column, to the next column, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to insert a new column. I've made this um, value an absolute. What that dollar sign does is it keeps the same. So if I drag it over, it doesn't pull in the new column. So that makes sense. If I dragged it over without the absolute value, it moves columns. So I'm looking at F, column F. D and E are my two columns that column F and are looking at, but when I drag it to G, it moves to E and F, okay? So that's not, I don't want that. I want it to stay with D and E. So when I do that number sign, the dollar signs, it keeps the same, um, the same information. So basically you're just dragging it over and I'm gonna change this to a D for days. And of course these match up because they're the same. And we drag it down for autofill. So I hope that was something else you, you might not know about is doing the dollar signs to help with that. You don't always have to do that if you're staying in the same column, but if you're moving over to a new column, it's good to make sure you know which ones you need to have the dollar signs on. There is some situations you will need to put them in front of the numbers, but it depends on your situation. So at this time, it would just be the columns. I don't want it to change, not the numbers. All right, let's, ooh. my computer's freaking out, panicking on me. Okay, go back. All right, any questions about dates? Okay, I'm gonna do some logical statements and then we'll take a break at 9.15. Does that sound good, Don? Um, yeah, not a, I was going to say if, if somewhere between nine, you know, nine fifteen and nine twenty, okay. uh, okay. so 10, 10 minute breaks fine. That's, and yeah, it's don't. nine twelve right now, right? For you. That's what I got on my cell phone. Okay. okay. All right. Just checking. Okay. So I'm going to delete this and, um, an if statement. So it will, let's do and statements. Um, what we, what I like to do. I don't have anything set up for this, so let me look. Insert. So, okay, so a couple of things. If you just want to um, move, instead of copy and pasting a column into the column next to it, uh, you can actually go create a new column and hit equals and then go to, your col go to the column you want to move the information over. Enter and drag down. Okay, so you have the equal signs for that column. Does that make sense? This also helps if you have stuff that's filtered. So if you have a filter and you need information from a column move to another column, if you can't copy and paste it because when it's filtered, you, you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. So you can, if it's filtered, you can go to your new column, hit equals, and then go to your column that you want the information from and hit that cell and then drag down in a filter situation, okay? We'll start there. This is not a and thing, but I'm getting ready for one, so. And um, I'm going to change a few of these to, um, to make it a little bit more um, easier to see what I'm wanting to done. Um, okay. So now I'm making another column. And what we're going to do is compare these two columns. Okay, this is your state and this is another state column. However, for some reason you're like, maybe they're not the same or what's different. Or maybe um, somebody submitted you some data that you're trying to compare. And this is a way you can compare it. So equals this equals that. Okay, so you're comparing the two columns, just doing equals. Hit enter. Um, and then if it's filtered, you drag. If it's not filtered, you can double click. Ah, sorry about that. Okay. And I'm assuming y'all know how to filter, but you might not. I'm going to show you that later anyways, but I'm going to show you now. 
I'm going to turn a filter on and then I'm going to look and it should show false and true. Okay. So if you're not using filters and you're just going through at the columns, you'll see that there's a false there, which means these two are not the same. There's another false. These two are not the same. Here's another false. They're not the same. Now, as Don mentioned earlier, formatting is key here. Um, if you have some, something formatted as a number and then you have something formatted as a text, it might end up all false, even if the numbers look the same. So make sure your formatting is done the exact same, okay? Um, so then you know that you're going to pick up a true or false correctly, okay? So that's, uh, that, that's one way of doing it. You can also do it as a... Um, Sorry. That's what I wanted you to see that. Sorry about that. Um, now I'm also going to show you a um, if function. Actually, we're just going to go and take a break and I'll work on the rest and when we get back. So that's a good one for y'all to remember. If you want to compare columns, you just do equal and equals to each column. Make sure they're formatted properly and you'll be able to look to see which one's the same, which one's not. So I think we can take a break, Don. All righty. I'll pause recording back in 10. Or do you need 15? Um, I'm fine with 10 or 15. doesn't matter to me. So Nine, whatever y'all want. 925. Cell phone time, 925. See you back. back sorry Don are you there I'm muted okay. <laughs> so we've been recording dead air for the last 30 seconds okay. uh, right. no, I, was, I was just sorry. thinking the uh the um that's a good example of conditional formatting too if 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 something isn't whatever the condition is that have to be equal uh you can set a column to red or whatever um, yes but yes that is i'm going to talk about conditional formatting later on all right um but yeah well, I i'm will sorry hush him. i'll hush and my let son's you take still over. sick i'm oh. sorry and uh, i was checking on him for a second my husband's here with him so um so you might hear a kid scream every once in a while i apologize <laughs> <laughs> Um, so well, tell him, tell him you let him out of his cage later and to quit his whining. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll let you get back to it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I went ahead and um, some of the things I was going to talk about was the logical functions. That's the next group which is um, the if the function and function and or function. Um, so I want to show you what an if looks like. So on if we would do um, equal, so I'm going to show you here. Ah, sorry. Okay. So uh, if the G2, which is the commission, is greater than or equal to, which we're using the greater than sign and the equal sign at the same time, equals three, then you can do a, um, if it is true, then doing great with exclamation point will pop up. And if it's false, needs improvement will pop up. Okay. So you can see right here how that works. So the cell that we're looking at and what that test is related to that cell. And then what the value would be if we did true and what the value is if it's false, okay? So if we drag that down or double click it, whichever, you can see, um, well, there it goes. Well, no, none of that did that work. Did it? Oh, everything's higher than three. <laughs> I made that up, so I apologize about that. Let's do delete, um, let's do less than three. You can see that. Nothing's less then, than three. Use, use greater than five or something. Oh, great, there you well, go. Well, greater than le it, it, or equals less than three. Ah, yeah. 
there so doing there you go so needs improvement which is not you know this is just making up just giving you two different um looks at it and then so you could do that with an if okay so that's where you put in new different words and things like that and it all kind of depends on what you're looking at of course how you would do it um you could do just equals three and that'll look different as well so everything that's not three um would say that or if you wanted to do equals five and then of course when you're doing that you have to have everything that that are words that you're adding in quotes just don't forget that okay and then on the and you can do an and function and is and it, it will always do a true or false and so you choose what you're comparing or, or you're not comparing, you're, you're grouping. So, um, so in this case, I'm looking at sales, the sales, if the cell F column is greater than 15,000 or 1500, sorry, 1500, um, actually that needs to be thousand. Yeah, thousand, sorry, is that another zero there? 15,000 or, or and if the commission is greater than three. Okay, so if the commission is greater than three, it'll be true, it, as well as if the sales is greater than 15,000. Okay, so it has to be both to be true. We're going to double click on that one and pull it down. You can see there's a couple of falses in there. This one is false because the 15,000, this is not greater than 15,000. But however, the, um, but the, the four is greater. So it's going to be false because it's not both. Okay. The or is the same, I forgot the zero. So if F2 is greater than 15,000, if sales is greater than 15,000 and commission is greater than, or, or commission is greater than three. So in this case, it'll be true if only one of them is true, okay? And you can do multiple items like this. So you don't have to just do two. So in this case, um, some of the ones that are false on the and are true in the or because it's one of them is true. And then other cases, this one right here is less than 15,000 and is only three. So you're going to have both falses. Okay. Did you say the, you... they'll take the, the and and the or will take multiple if this yes. and this and this and this and this? Okay. Yes, it'll continue. Yep logical i don't know how many logicals i'm sure you could max it out at some point but um um but yeah it will take more more than two more and than that's two. good enough mm -hmm. um okay so another thing i was going to show y'all is how to audit formulas and this is a cool little trick um so if you have something um, hopefully y'all can see this if you have something like this where you have a lot of numbers, you're adding up information and you have multiple formulas mixed in. Um, and then you have a label, like another formula, but it comes up with this DIV uh, uh, slash zero exclamation point, okay, which is an error. Um, and you don't know why. Now in this page, of course, you can kind of look at it and go B11, C18, okay, B11 is here divided by C18, and it's that blank, okay? It's very easy to see, but when you have different sheets that are combining together to format this file, this little spreadsheet specifically to get to that percentage, it's very hard to go back and look for your problems, if that makes sense. So there is a way to do that. <clears throat> you can go to, um, here we go. Okay, go to the formula tab. <coughs> Sorry about that. Formula tab. And um, you can click um, trace precedence and trace dependence. Okay. So I'm just going to, um, you're going to click on the, the actual error and go trace precedence. And it'll show you exactly which items are connected to that, that formula. Okay. So then you can go back and fix it. Okay. Um, you can hit trace dependence if there was a reason that you had a dependent, but we don't have one for this one. Um, and then you can also remove the errors. Okay. So the errors, the trace dependence up here, prescendent, sorry, prescendent. Um, and it'll show you which specific uh, cells are attached to that formula. Okay. 
you want to remove those areas, you can always do error checking as well. Um, when you click it, now you have to be on the cell. So don't forget, you have to be on the cell. That's an error. Um, and that's helpful. So well, in this situation, you might not have to hang on one second. Let me do this. Yeah, OK. So when you click error checking, you don't have to be on the exact cell because it will look throughout the entire spreadsheet for you. And you can look at it and it'll tell you what your what your issue is and it'll tell you why. And if you don't know how to fix it, you can um, click help on this error, ignore error, edit in formula bar or et cetera. Or you can go and edit yourself without editing with this, this error, error checking tool, okay? If you edit in formula bar, it'll pull it up for you and you can fix it. So in this situation, um, I'm assuming it'll be the 19 instead of the 18. So we'll do that. And there's your percentage. Now it didn't come up as percent, so you'll have to fix it to a percentage number, but you know, that's what it is. They may have any questions about that. It's pretty helpful whenever um, you have a huge, a whole lot of information on one spreadsheet and you can't easily go back and trace what you're doing. So, okay. All right. Another cool thing I have, um, I'm going to delete these unless anybody has any questions about if, and, or, ors. Nope. Okay. All right. Another cool thing is um, validate data. So to validate data, I'm going to delete this one too. Um, you can set up um, rules on your spreadsheets um, for specific reasons. Um, and so let's say you have someone that's typing in names, cities, addresses, you know, states, maybe a date, um, et cetera. And you want to make sure they follow specific rules. So like with the state, let's say we want to follow the rule of only two letters for the state. Um, um, and, and if you don't want to do that, then like only three letters or, or a date of employment, you want it to be a date or the sales numbers has to be at least five numbers or you know commission has to be higher than you know etc so there's you can set up different rules okay so let's say you want to set up rules for the state column okay um let's see where is that at? don't use it all the time is it there it is it looks funny most of my stuff is, oh, this is bigger. So I'm kind of, <laughs> I was like, well, where'd it go? Um, okay, so, okay. So we're gonna highlight the column we want, go to da data validation and click data validation. And we're gonna create a rule, okay? So we're going to allow um, a text length for this that, um, equals two, 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 two letters only, okay? And we're gonna have, when the cell is selected, we wanna have, you know, information that pops up to tell that person, if it's not you doing it, um, to what, you, what you're allowed to have. So, um, Okay, we're going to put state initials must be two letters. Okay. And then you can make it so there's different things you can do. It can just be informational. So then they can still type it no issues. Um, it could have a there could be a warning that warns that person, you know, throws up an error message that basically warns them to uh, that they need to they need to consider that they're not putting in the right information. And then there is a stop message a stop message technically stops them like they cannot actually continue without changing that information properly okay so it's kind of neat so let's just do warning and then we're like uh we'll put um state initials okay and then we're going to hit okay okay so now we're gonna come down here and you see right here, it says state initials must be two letters. Let's do just B, um, Z, 
T. And because I went over, I put three letters on there. It says must be two. Do I want to continue? Let's say yes. And it moves on. But that's because it's a warning. Okay. Now let's go back to the data. Let's do a stop. Okay. This is where it puts an error, a full on error, and it stops it from happening. So let's do BZT. Um, and it will not let me continue on without updating and retrying and fixing it to two letters. Okay. It lets me do it there. But when I go back, if I try to do it again, must be two. Okay. If I hit cancel, it actually removes it. <laughs> the last one, uh, the last edit. So, okay. All right. So we're going to change that back to. Um, a warning and we're going to try a couple of them updating them okay and now now we know we have a um we have a data validation uh, validate data set up val uh, data validation um information warning set up on this column what we're going to do is um, I like that one. Um, go back to the sorry, over here and it says circle invalidate or clear the validation circle. So we're going to have it circle invalidate. Okay. And if you go down in your spreadsheet, you will see that the invalidate, the wrong ones that have three letters, are circled. Okay. Let's say you don't want them circled that way anymore. Go back up. And of course, the word state is circled because I highlighted it with it. You can clear the validation circles and uh, you know you can go back and fix it or you can keep them on there. Okay. Pretty helpful in some situations, depending on what you need it for. Yeah, that's cool. Never, never, I never looked into it before. I'm just curious if, if they're like the same as conditional formatting and the condition is to format something that's Bad, invalid is do you, do you know like a, a difference between the two or is it kind of the same purpose and i guess it's the same purpose um it might pull like if you were trying to do it um i don't know because i've never really done with conditional formatting i've only done some stuff with that i've not done one that's like invalid data with conditional formatting um so i'd have to do some comparing on that to see but and it might be one of those things that just a lot of people don't use and they just kept it on there. I don't yeah. know. Maybe more for, for maybe more for um for um forms when people use Excel for forms. That uh, might be what it's more for. There you go. Yeah, um, it's nice. It's always nice to have more than one way to do something. So uh, yeah. Don't definitely. let me slow you down. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. So I just uh well, I guess I'll try to clear that, see if I can get that cleared. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, I thought I cleared that off. But... For some reason, it's still saying it's there, but then it's not there. So, okay. It finally went away. I couldn't figure out why it was still staying. It was there. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is show you um, some text to columns. Um, what that does is it separates out the information in columns um, a different way. Earlier, I showed you how to use the string text functions of left and right. Um, and so this is another way. Like I said, I don't usually use left and uh, I used to not use left and right a lot. Now I use it more often because I've figured out it's, it's quicker in some situations for me. In other situations, uh, using text to columns, which is a way to separate out a column, is a lot quicker. So um, we're going to uh, separate out column A. And we're going to do that by highlighting all of column A, and then going to data, the data tab at the top. 
and then going over to your data tools area that says it should say text to columns like uh, and I should have reminded y'all your excel might look different than mine and that's because of the year it might be so I apologize for that um so text to columns you'll click it so there's two ways two major ways to separate out the text there's a way called delimited and there's a fixed width um, delimited um, is helpful when you have something like a space or a comma in between the information you're wanting to separate out, or if your information is not numbers, because most of the time with numbers, you know, everything's lined up perfectly because you have so many numbers and you want to separate it specifically like at a specific point. Other, other situations like with words and stuff like names, you can't just separate them out specifically at line 14, you know, or space 14, because Mary Kate or, or Dawn, <laughs> two different, you know, that's a different length of names. So we're going to use delimited on the name column for A, and we're going to click it marked here and then hit next. And then in this situation, they have a space and a column. Okay, so if I choose the space, it leaves the comma, okay? If I choose the comma, it takes, it keeps, it, it leaves the space in front of the name, in front of the last name, okay? No big deal, because you can always just ask for it to be removed. Um, you can always remove them later. So we're just going to use comma. So the comma is gone, and we it just leaves the space. And this is what it will look like, okay? So we marked comma. I don't ever remove the tab, because... Uh, there's no usually there's not a reason to if you if you notice it messes up your information go ahead and remove the check by the tab now if you have another situation where you have a um a semicolon or a dash or any other type of um, item that's in between the information you can just type it in here for other okay okay so we're going to hit next okay because it's letters general seems to be it will be fine for me um, if you want it to be in the text format, you would choose text for the first one, move over to the second group and hit text for the second one. Um, it all depends on what you're needing. If you need it, if it's numbers and you're wanting to keep it in the date format, choose date, um, that kind of thing. If you don't want to import the column and you just want it to be completely set it, separated out, you can skip that, that kind of thing. So just you, each one, each um, separation, you have an option to fix that in the, in the, in the format that you want it to be. Okay. If it's related to numbers and it has a leading zero and you want to keep that leading zero, you need to make sure it's marked as text. So then it keeps it on there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and hit finish. You can see it separated them out. Um, and there you go. And you can also see, notice right here, it does have the beginning of that space. And if you don't know how to do that, what I usually do, and there might be another quick way, is if I need to remove that, I go to find and select, go to replace, find what, space, replace with what, nothing, replace all, and hit okay, and close, and it removed them, okay? I do that a lot on certain things if you want to get rid of the commas. If we wanted to keep the use the comma and kept the comma over here, you would do the same thing for the comma. You just use the comma to find and replace and replace it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go back and now we're going to do um, text to columns with the, here, reduce sales. Okay. So for sales, I can highlight that one for you. Do another one that way. Okay, for sales, let's do, let's do text to columns. Go to data, text to columns. We're gonna do a fixed width version. And let's say we just split it right after the second spot. You can split it a few times and that's another key. So you wanna have as many columns to the right of it as you want it to be split. So if you think there's a couple of spaces, you want to add in at least two, two columns. Um, sometimes you might want to add in a third just for safety measures, because if it pastes it on it, then your stuff on your other columns are gone. Um, usually it warns you, it says there's something in this column. Do you really want to replace it? You just say yes <laughs> or no, <laughs> depending on your situation. So, um, so I'm going to split it right here on these two. Hit next. 
I'm going to call the second one, I'm gonna make it text and the first one, I'm gonna make it text. Why? Just because it sounds like fun. And then we'll click finish. There's always, see right here, there's already data here. Do you wanna replace it? Okay, here we go. So they're all coming up as a text item, okay? Now, another thing, since we're sitting here on this, I wanna show you this. If you have a whole set of numbers coming up as text or a handful of them, yet you need them to be numbers, like actual numbers or to make them look like numbers. If it comes up and it has this uh, triangle at the top, you can start at the top, at that first number, hit control shift down, go back up to that top number, click on that box and cl connect, click convert to number. Okay, let's try that again. Man, I could have used that a couple of days ago. I I didn't realize you could do the because you're getting the same warning on all the on all the rows. Right. I went through now, and convert to number, convert to number, convert to number each individually. So good. Yes. Grief. Everything has to be set up just right for it to work. But yes, you do, and and you have to go back up to the first one. So it's kind of strange. Like even though you see it technically, and and that might be fine. There somehow it's still reading the first one. But from what I've been told and what has happened with me is you have to go back up to that first one. You can't include anything else. It has to be the same information and then go back and click convert to number and then it converts. Of course, it loses all those leading zeros or extra zeros because it's not a text. Um, but yes, it's very, very helpful to have that option. And if you have any throughout it that's not the same, then you have to form, you know, you have to work on that. You have to, you can't have them in that group. They have to be separated out. So you want to filter them if possible. So, okay. So I'm going to back out of that. So we're not messing with that. Um, let's see. Okay. So one thing I use a lot is we will um, have a lot of information that looks very, very similar. And um, I use remove duplicates for that. So I'm going to show you how to remove duplicates just because I know there are duplicates, okay? So right now I'm looking and there's at least two people that say John Cleese on here, okay? And they look like they're from New York and there's a chance that everything's the same, okay? Now, what I've tried to do is I have to think about my data. Is it important that, I mean, what if that person that's we're talking about, let's say we're talking about the specific person. So, but related to a whole bunch of people, is it important to have different rows of that person? Do we need to compare the rows? Um, you know, is there a chance that they could have different information like sales related, et cetera, okay? So, and are you looking for, is everything the same or just the first name or the first the first row, first column information the same, et cetera? So you have to start asking questions about your information. And so if everything, if you're just looking to decide if you have multiple rows of all the same information, okay? So the name, the city, the state, date of employment, sales commission and commission, all that stuff is all the same, then you can go and highlight everything you do that by clicking up here at this corner, at least I do. And then I will go to um, remove duplicates. It's usually a bigger box, so sorry it's so small, but remove duplicates. And this is where you, I like to make sure it knows my data has headers, okay? And then if you want to compare everything, you leave it all checked, okay? If you're looking at every item to make sure it's all duplicated for each row, hit okay, and it'll remove some, if it is, okay? So this, in this situation, um, there were 62 duplicated values found and removed, okay? So um, now there is a chance that, um, that some of that information, uh, that there are other situations like, there's another John Cleese here, and if there's a chance that some of his information is not the same. And we would know that because it's still there. Okay, so something's different about them. 
Okay, so that's where the, that question came into play, where you have to question your data and wonder what your data is including. So if if it matters that all the other information is um, that could could be different or the same, or if it doesn't matter, depends on your question. Okay, so in this case, let's say I don't care about the rest of it, and I just want to want to have the same want to know about the names. Okay, my personal opinion is I would create a new tab. new sheet I would highlight all the a all the names put them on the new sheet and let's say I'm just trying to get a clean non-duplicated list of names I go back up here remove duplicates and let it remove them okay I hope that makes sense Basically, you just have to know what your information is and what your goal of that information is. Okay. All right, so um, another version of that, just so you know, uh, is we're gonna go to um, conditional formatting. So we're back to our main practice page. And as we said, we've had it, we have a few on here that are gonna be doubled up probably. I'm gonna back up a little bit. So we get the okay. All right, so we're back on home tab at the top and there's a file in the middle, an item in the middle that says conditional formatting. Um, there are different items here. And one of the items I'm gonna go over first is the duplicate value since we just talked about removing duplicates, okay? So, <clears throat> Go down here to duplicate values and you can choose what it looks like if you're wanting to color you can change your different information depending on what you're doing but i usually just leave it the same and i'm looking at i'm looking for those that are duplicated now in, in some situations you might be only one that you know if you need to have the duplicates and you want to only want to know who's not duplicated then you can change it to unique, unique values only okay so it just depends on your situation hit okay and they'll come up um, pink and red, okay, or whatever color you chose. So that's telling you that there are more than one John Cleese's on this list. There's more than one Terry Gillum on this list. There's more than one Carol Cleveland on this list, okay? So because of that, we know we need to consider what, how to remove the duplicates. So um, <clears throat> that's where you have to start asking those questions, okay? Now, once you've made your decisions on about removing the duplicates, et cetera, uh, you'll also want to go back and, and you finish doing everything you need to. You need to clear these um, conditional formats. And the reason why is conditional formatting actually um, is, has a lot of data. It, 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 it drags down your Excel really bad whenever you have a lot. So just be aware of that. Um, so if, you're, if, you're, if your Excel spreadsheet starts acting really, really goofy and you have conditional formatting, it's probably because of that. So just be aware of that. So we're gonna clear the rules um, on those selected cells to get them out of the way. Um, a lot of people will filter them, et cetera, but I'll show you some more stuff with filtering in just a minute. Um, another type of conditional formatting. So does anybody have any questions about removing duplicates? Let me start from there. Um, like I said, just you have to think about what you're doing before you make the move. Um, you can, because you can make, you can choose the different columns that you're looking at. I should show you that real quick, I guess. So with the data and the removing duplicates, um, if you only want to look at the names and select all and only want to look at the names, you can look at that and it will move every, it won't, it will only look at the names and remove every, I, you know, the entire rows of something how do I explain this? It's hard, <laughs> not in person. Um, in the entire, all the rows. So if the John, the first John Cleese, it holds it. If it finds another John Cleese below, it removes the whole row. So it's only looking at that name um, because I've only chose that name. If I asked it to look at the name in the city, it would make sure John Cleese and New York match. And the next row that has John Cleese in New York, um, it will keep. But the next one after that, if it doesn't have New York, it will delete it, okay? Um, same, so it depends on how many of these are checkmarked, okay? 
Um, okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna go, we'll go back to conditional formatting, sorry. I'm back and forth a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so back to home, we're gonna go back to conditional formatting. So the next thing is let's do some greater than. So let's do on the sales, we're gonna highlight the sales column, conditional formatting, highlight sale rules, greater than. Anything that's greater than 27825 sounds great. It sounds like a great one. And then it'll pop up, okay? It'll show you all the ones that are greater than that specific number. Um, less than 27825. And right now it's showing both. So let's clear the rules and go back, highlight, less than that number, hit okay. And it'll show all the numbers that are less than that number. We're gonna clear the rules again. Between, the so between two numbers. Equal to. If it only equal to one, and that number is not on here, so it's not, there's no equal. But that rule is still there, so make sure you clear it. It's looking for a specific text name. You can highlight it there. Um, and some dates, you can do the dates, okay? Um, top and bottom, here we go, top 10 items. You can do top 10 items, you can do top um, 11, uh, you know, eight items, whatever, um, and it'll highlight that. Um, it'll be the highest numbers, okay, related to it in the number area, of course. Okay. The same thing, it is percentages, above averages, below averages, top 10%. Okay. Um, data bars. So if you want, so what it does is it looks at all the information in that, in, that, in that column and then makes bars based off of that. So like, um, you'll see, you can choose different colors. So it kind of shows up as little data bars throughout the whole thing. And, um, and of course, like if this number wasn't here, then, you know, another one would be a, would be a little bit bigger. So they get bigger if your bigger numbers are gone because it looks like a chart. Okay. Any questions about any of that so far? Okay, color scales. This is kind of neat to me. I always like these. I don't use them very often, but definitely um, helpful when you're trying to prove to somebody, you know, show somebody um, sales and who's doing really well you know, higher number at green, meaning awesome, great job, or lower number at red, um, or in between numbers or lighter colors. So, and you can adjust those. So you can manage that rule here. Um, so let's go back up here. So um, you can do one of two things. So color scales, you could do more rules, or you can go down and do manage rules. And here's the rule that we're looking at. We're going to hit edit rule and then you can change the colors. Okay. You can also do some formatting changes. You can um, do, you know, two color scale, data bar, icon sets. You can do it by percentage or lowest or highest value. Um, like I said, the colors can be changed. Let's say you don't want those colors. Let's say you want different colors and hit OK. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. So it's useful in some situations, other situations, you know, it depends on your situation, of course. Uh, let's go to icons. Icons are neat as well. Um, and do icons. Let's do manage rules on those. Oh, sorry. Manage rules, edit rule, apologize about that. And when the value is, try to figure, you know, if you want to change it.
Okay. Change that a little bit. Clear the rules. Anybody have any questions about conditional formatting and why you might want to use it? That's okay. good stuff. No questions, guys. Everybody, everybody tracking. I know that was really basic, but I mean, it depends on your situation, you know, how often you might use it. And I'm not sure how much y'all, how often you would use it. So, um, okay. So another little tip is transposing data um, related to pacing. So, um, so on this table, this tab here, transpose, there is a, um, there's a, it, let's say you're looking at this kind of data and you're like, man, I really wish it was formatted the opposite direction. You can do that by just copying and pasting your information. So we're just gonna copy. Whoa. We're gonna go back home and we're gonna do it this way. <laughs> control shift arrow over and down. Control cut or copy. Let's just do copy. Go down to a different cell. Go up to the paste options and there's a transpose paste option You can click it and you can paste it. It's a real simple fix to a lot of people's problems. Um, a lot of people don't know about it, um, but I have randomly will have people ask me personally, I have this information. I really want it to be the opposite direction. Can someone tell me how to do it? Super simple. Copy, paste in a transpose, choose pet transpose, transpose, sorry. Okay. All right. I'm going to get off there. Okay. Uh, okay. I also wanted to show you some other pasting options. Girl copy. Um, okay. Uh, so let's see. Key force. Let me do this way. Okay. So if you're looking at pasting something, um, you know, you have your formulas. So if you paste, if you naturally paste, like using control V to paste, just remember that when you do that, it'll keep everything, okay? It's not going to get rid of your formulas. It'll keep it all there. So if you need to do other things, you'll need to come up and choose paste or right click and paste and choose which item you really need to look like. So formulas, formulas, number formatting. Um, so you might, uh, it would might keep the formatting of a number, um, keep source formatting. So if you bring it from somewhere else and you want it to look exactly the same way and not um, what you're pasting it into, you wouldn't want to use the K, um, that one right there. Um, if you're moving a um, chart and you don't want borders, if you're, um, See, if you want to paste it with the widths the same, so if you're copying a whole whole table and you, but not an actual table, not not a formatted table, just a table of or else uh, information, um, then you might want to choose the column width so you don't have to adjust them afterwards. Um, of course, to transpose the values, this, like I said, with values, what's nice about values is um, when you're trying to um, get rid of formulas in a in a column or row. Um, percentage and uh, values and number formatting. So if you like how the numbers were formatted a certain way, you can paste it that way. Values and source formatting, same type of thing. <clears throat> if you want to come from somewhere else, but you're post pasting the uh, values and you want it to keep how it looks before, that's where you want to do. Um, formatting, paste link. You want to paste a link or if you want to take your stuff and format it into a picture, if you want to paint, uh, paste it as a picture um, or a linked picture. So, and then of course there's paste specials and, um, and those are, if you'll look at those, you'll have options and I'm not going to go over all those, but I wanted you to be aware that just because you think pasting is super basic in Excel, it's not. There's a lot of things you can do with pasting. So um, and copying and pasting, so if you ever come across trying to figure out how to make something look a specific way when you go to paste, or if you want to get rid of something, do some looking into the pasting options. Um, it'll probably help you out more than you think. So, okay. You can even skip blanks when you paste. That kind of thing. So be aware of that. Okay, um, I'm gonna cancel that. Um, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do some filtering, filtering and sorting options. And, um, 
Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> so I turned on the filter earlier and I want to show y'all that again. So when you highlight, I usually don't format as a table. And I think Dawn, last time when we did this, you said that you were teaching, you taught them before how to format as a table, um, which is great because there's a lot of things you can do with a table. Um, I hadn't covered it before, but absolutely. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I, we haven't really talked Excel okay. uh, in particular at all so far. Mary Kate was oh. waiting for you, waiting for you. Didn't want to steal any of your thunder. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. So I'll show you a little bit of that before we finish then too. But I usually don't format as tables just because a lot of my information doesn't come in as a table. It just comes in information on the spreadsheet. And then um, I just work with what's there. Um, now a lot of people get, you know, like, um, we were talking earlier, you kind of get into a habit of what you would like. And so if you'd like to have it formatted like a table, that's great. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, so it's anyway, just that there, so, uh, I mean, and you guys may be way ahead of this, but I, I always turn a clean CSV that I download or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I always turn it into a table, even if it's not necessarily pristine, just because so many things seem to operate automatically on a table compared to a, a straight sheet you know and it's probably something i need to work more at doing myself <laughs> i just don't do it very often so um but yeah it like like we were talking about it just might be a, you know as y'all are working on these just know that that's a choice uh, and you definitely can do that um instead of just doing like i do um so if you don't have a table if it's not formatted as a table it's just the spreadsheet um, you would come up here to the left corner to the triangle, highlight it, and you're highlighting everything, and go over uh, to the sort and filter home tab, sort and filter section over to the right, and um, you would turn it on and off there where it says filter, okay? Um, if you have a filter turned on um, and, or, or, you know, something filtered out, um, then you would, and you're wanting to clear everything, you would use the clear button here. You would not use the clear button over to the left of it, okay? So clear button where the filter is, not over to the left. Now, a lot of other people will also go up to data uh, tab, and there's a filter option there with the clear button next to it. So both spots are perfectly easy to use. It just depends on your choice and what you prefer to do. So we're gonna, the filters are on. And I'm going to just show you a few things about this. So when you're filtering, filtering does not, it just hides the information. It filters the information for that moment. It does not filter it out um, forever. Okay. So please, if you're planning on filtering and sending it to someone, make sure that you understand that that person can see all that stuff if they want to. Um, so uh, you would want to copy and paste if you wanted only specific stuff information to a file to send to someone, you would want to copy and paste it into another spreadsheet and get rid of what you don't want. Okay. Uh, I've had that, it happened this past year. We found out people thought filtering was, um, was getting rid of or hiding from people and it's not. So please be aware of that. Um, so I would just wanted to show y'all a couple of things. So for the cities, um, you can see that um, it shows all the different cities. It pops up all the different cities. And if I only want to look at a specific city, then I would unselect all, select a, call, a, a check mark or two, whichever, however many ones I want, and hit OK. And it'll pull up specifically the, the people who are in that city. OK. And then we'll go back and clear that specific filter. Over on state, let's say I want to look at a few states, California, Connecticut, okay, hit OK. It pulls up all of them, okay. Um, dates, those come up a little bit different usually. Usually it starts off with the year. Okay, so if it's formatted as a date, let me, let me, let me make sure you understand that. If it's formatted as a true date, it'll come up usually with the year, and then you hit the plus marks to see what other, like the months and then the dates, okay? So please be aware that dates could be one of the most painful things for you to deal with. <laughs> Cleaning that up is the better option. So like when you go to look at the filter, if you see a lot of information that looks really weird, um, where it does not look the same as it does right here, 
um, then you would want to clean up your dates to make sure they're all formatted properly the same way. And then that'll make your filtering a whole lot quicker and easier for yourself. Okay. So if you have time connected to your dates, I'd get rid of the time if you don't need it um, and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, and so related to that, we're going to talk about different options on how to filter out besides just choosing the check marks. Okay. Because there's a lot of times we'll have a lot of data that like this, this is a whole lot of numbers. Well, you know, it actually means something. They're not like IDs. These are actually sale numbers, uh, sales numbers. Uh, so they're money. So we might want to be looking at something more than or less than. So if you go to number filters over to the right, you can choose different filters. So equals does not equal greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, between. It kind of does the same thing. It, it filters sort of like the conditional formatting looks at it. So you're filtering for that. So let's say greater than 15,000. Hit OK. And we're filtering for, it filtered for all the ones that are greater than 15,000. You can go back, filter numbers, do less than 15,000. Hit OK. Less than 15,000. Okay. Then you can also go to another item and filter for that as well. So let's say we're wanting to filter for the four and let's say we want to filter for the 90. And then let's say we want to filter for Point Claire. So I have multiple filters right there and uh, to bring it down to specific person for specific reason. Okay. All right, I want to clear all of those filters and bring it back to the original no filter, nothing's been filtered. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the top and hit filter. We hit clear, sorry, and it has cleared it. So one thing you do have to remember is that if you're using filters and you're making edits to any of the cells, you need to make sure the correct filter is on to make those edits. If you are making edits to cells, you want to make edits to all the cells, you need to make sure all the filters are cleared completely. Um, Using the filters are very, very useful, but you have to think your way through them or you'll be very angry at yourself because you forgot that you did something you weren't supposed to do. Um, so double check your work as you're working with them. Okay. Um, related to filtering, we're also gonna talk about sorting. Okay. So um, going to highlight a few of these. I'm gonna highlight, oh, only have one Idaho. I want to highlight all my M states, certain color. Okay. Go back and clear. Okay. So, so sorting, you can sort each of these columns. So if you have your filters on, okay, and they're on for everything, make sure your filter's on for everything that you have columns on. Okay, so you go to the right and look, you see, I have all these extra filters. That's just because they're random columns, but that's okay. No big deal. You just want to make sure everything is in all, all everything's filtered. Okay. Um, when you do a drop down, you can sort, and that will sort the entire entire table or group of information. Okay. So, uh, use your filter, use your filter, and then sort A to Z if you wanted to, and then it puts all the city, cities A to Z. Okay. And this will do it by item, okay? So this isn't grouping them. So it's not like by city, then by state. This is by specific column, okay? If I want date of employment, oldest to newest, newest to oldest, highest sales, or, you know, that kind of thing, back and forth. Okay, so you just choose which of them. And that does by the item itself, by that specific column, not by everything together. Um, not, not multiple columns at one time, if that makes sense. But it moves all the columns at one time. I know that's confusing um, how I'm saying that. But um, by name, okay, so you just do that and that'll work. Um, you can also sort by, you can filter by color. That's another option. So, um, Let's say I only want to look at the orange people, the, the orange rows that I just did. I can go down to filter by color and choose that color. Or I can choose everything that's not that color. 
or I can sort by that color. So I would bring maybe all the yellow, orange down the bottom or orange at the top. Oh, sorry, I got to clear. See, there you go. I got to clear the filter first. Now sort by color and it brings all the colors to the top. All right, I'm gonna, um, let's see. Easy, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to use sort that's not just in the filter area, okay? So I'm highlighting the whole area. Highlighting and then going um, to home tab and then go, go ahead. What, while you're on that task of highlighting the whole sheet, mm -hmm. um, I noticed you dragged, and you're in Excel way more than I am, um, you, you dragged across to highlight everything as opposed to hitting that upper left-hand button. Oh, I wasn't highlighting. Oh, well, earlier I was. I did hit the upper left-hand button for everything. But okay. on this, I was just highlighting the specific um, from H over back over there um, for the sort options. That's just me. It's just habit sometimes. Okay. So as long as there's no voids, no blank lines and whatnot, that upper left-hand corner is the best way to grab everything, right? Right. That's what yeah. I if you're okay. wanting to grab everything, that cool. is correct. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. So we're going to clear all the um, filters by clicking clear. And then we're going to go to custom sort and um, so on custom sort, I want to sort by the name. Oh, sorry. We're going to choose my data has headers over here with the check marks. And then we're going to add different sections. Okay. So sort by name, A to Z is fine. And we're going to add another level. Sort by state, A to Z is fine. Add another level. And let's then sort by um, sales largest to smallest, okay? And then we're gonna add one more level and sort by uh, commission, and we're gonna choose the color, okay? Oh, sorry, wrong thing, cancel. Um, so you'll do that by choosing cell color, no cell color, and then we're actually gonna choose the orange, okay? So if you look, so the name will be done by A to Z, the state will be done A to Z. The sales will be largest to smallest and commission will be the cell color, okay? If you had something that um, were like one or two or three numbers or letters, like how do I, so like this, um, I sometimes will have, so let's say I have a custom list of things. So like one, two or three, and maybe the three is the most important. And so you might want to start with it. Um, you can make your own custom list or maybe two is more important than one or three. So you'll just go to custom list and you can choose. You can do like if it's yes or no, because, you know, if you have more, so like days of the week or the months or let me see, like for us, um, like associate degrees and then TCs, then CP. So alphabetically wise, that doesn't work. So I have to add in a custom list for me to look at things that are more important than the others. Um, yes and no doesn't really, I mean, it's fine, but um, you can always do that alphabetical because there's only two, but like January, the, the list of the, the months, if you want it to be the list of the months in specific order, then you can do that. Does that make sense? You can create your own custom list in your own specific order. Um, so then it looks at it that way instead of alphabetized or greater than or equal to or by color. Okay. Now I don't want this one anymore. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to highlight the one I don't want and hit delete level. You can also copy level and it can look at it a couple of different ways, but we're not going to do that. You can also decide, let's say I want actually the orange to go up at the top so I can move it. So I've highlighted this commission and we're gonna go to the very top. It'll be the first thing, okay? We're gonna hit okay. And you'll see everybody that was orange moved up first. Let me go back to my list. Then they do, Then it's by last name or by name. Then it's by state. 
and then it's by sales. Why? I just have no reason, but that's but that's why, how it looks like that. Does anybody have any questions about sorting or filtering? Um, just one thing. Once you get everything sorted and filtered and you've put all that work into it and you've mm -hmm. got it where you want it, uh, can you click on that find and select? Because sometimes you want to save just the the displayed values or just the visible values. You know what I mean? Uh, right have you, here? Have you, yeah, have you got that in your... Yeah, you, uh, what's well, your question? Sorry. Well, well, once you've got it sorted and filtered mm -hmm. and you just want that data, like you're maybe you're going to send it to somebody and you don't want to send because, you you know, they can always unfilter the data. Um, oh, how, okay. how do you send a filtered and sorted worksheet to another worksheet? You know what I mean? As if. Like, like copy just that sorted oh. and filtered data. Well, since it's filtered, I mean, it's 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 set like this. So you can just copy and paste it into another to. into another yeah. sheet, and it won't bring over the the data that you filtered out. Oh, and oh, in this case, I don't have anything filtered. That's that's probably what you're saying. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's get something filtered out real quick. Okay. And I, and I know I like to stay on script, Mary Kate, when I'm teaching. So if that's not something you were you were prepared you're fine for. sorry Ma, um it's panicking on me i apologize okay i'm gonna copy go to a new sheet and we're gonna paste and we're gonna try this out real quick so we know Okay, so, yep. Yeah. Okay, so when we did that, if, because I just pasted it just plain, then yes, the filter, it's gone. The, I mean, uh, the information that I had filtered out is not there. Gotcha, cool. Mm -hmm. And I did, I checked that just by saying there's 39 rows here and there's not 30, there's 35 over here. So then so, sometimes, and I'll be honest, Sometimes that doesn't work that way. You have to be careful when you're copying and pasting with filters. Uh, I don't know if it's like the choice or how it's set up. I don't know. I've not, um, but most of the time it will not go with it. Um, now, if you're hiding rows and hiding uh, columns, that will go with it. I will do, I do know that those go with it unless you choose um, to not take them over and you got to make sure you choose it properly. So. Maybe that's okay. what I was thinking of, because there's a in that find and select next to the sort and filter button. It seemed like there's a way to to go to special, probably. Yeah. And only select only select visible. Stuff, yeah. Visible which, cells only. Yeah. yeah that's what it is. Yeah. That's what I was and thinking. that's related to that hide and unhide area and when to hide the columns. Gotcha. There we go. Cool. I, yeah. I think All that's right. really what that's really if, if you're at a good stopping point. Yes. All right. Let's pause for 10. So what is that? Uh, uh 1035 close enough sounds good all right all right welcome back sorry <laughs> i'm my two monitors are not really set up very well at my house so <laughs> Um, okay, so a couple of things I want to talk to you about as well is um, when you have a file that you're noticing is running really, really slow, kind of like mine was earlier, and you really don't have a ton of information in it, maybe just a couple of uh, tabs, uh, sheets. Um, one of the things I have learned is that sometimes there's more rows and columns um, being grabbed and then it should be. And so um, what I will do, what I usually do is I will start a new file, a new workbook and copy the exact data that's on the file on the spreadsheets and put them in that new one. Then save that new workbook, okay? And I say it like that um, because there's also a chance that your information could have things hidden in it that you're not aware of. 
but I'm letting you know that in case you try to email somebody something and they you can't or you're working on a file and it's running really 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 slow and it shouldn't be um, it could be something as simple as you just have too much information like your your excel spreadsheets looking at too many rows when it shouldn't be so um, just be aware of that just try that out um, and then um, if it's still large you can always check for conditional formatting connect check for um, formulas things like that um, Another thing I want to show you is different ways to format for printing um, that um, I'm not sure how much y'all will have to print yourselves um, or format into a PDF type file, uh, which is the same thing to me as printing um, in a way. Um, but if you are working with people who are not Excel savvy, they usually have a bad habit of um, wanting to print their Excel stuff and, and they'll print and they'll print and then they'll paste their sheets together to try to look at the data. So I wanted to show you all a few things about printing real quick in case for some reason you are working with someone that doesn't really know how to format into a format Excel or use Excel properly and they'd rather have it printed. Okay, so one thing is this, um, if you'll go up to view, and then go to page break view. It'll pull over, hopefully. Uh-oh, there we go. It'll pull over um, what um, a page might look like if you're trying to print. Now, most of the time it won't do what it just did then. I probably already had this formatted, um, but it'll have, it might have three or four pages set up, it, you know, on this one page, just because of how it's set up. So what we do is the dark blue is the page, okay? So you would move those around and go all around your data, okay? Get all your data in there. If you don't have, you know, 40 lines can fit on a page, on, on a sheet of paper. It might be a little small, but it can. But if you, uh, if it's way more than 40 lines, um, 40 rows, uh, then I would suggest that um, you kind of just kind of split up your pages pretty equally. If that makes sense and you might even try to look at it and see what it looks like on on uh, in a pdf um, once you set it up okay so page one you would just kind of move it around and see how that would work okay that's one option then go to page layout on page layout you can choose your margins so margins i usually try to do narrow okay you can choose your orientation um, that all depends on like how many columns you have. If you only have two columns or three columns or four columns, then I would say do portrait. Um, but if you have, you know, five or six, then I would highly recommend landscape. Um, uh, obviously your letter, you probably are using letter um, paper, size paper. That's what we use all the time. Um, you could probably, you could do legal or um, anything like that, but most people are gonna want it to be in letter size format. Um, then we're gonna go to print titles. Print titles um, will give you an option of, if you have multiple pages and you have headers at the top of your page, you can choose rows to repeat at top and you can highlight those rows, that row. So my row that I'd like to repeat at the top is the um, one, row one, and it would come across row one. Now, if you had, columns on the left that were kind of formatted differently. In this case, every row is special, but you might have columns on the left that um, that might be formatted totally different. It might be formatted more like, um, I mean, sorry, rows, not columns, row, your first column formatted more like a first row, the first column formatted more like columns instead of rows. Um, you might want a column to repeat on the left too. Um, another thing is when people are printing, you know, Excel does, it naturally has lines on it for us to see in the Excel format, but when you print, it doesn't. So you can choose this option of grid lines here. Um, and you can also choose, you know, if you want it black and white, that kind of thing. If you want to change your um, page order, which I never mess with that. Um, if you have comments and notes built into, like people have commented, you've been commenting on it, you can choose where to place those at the end of your sheet. 
displayed on sheet notes only um but or not at all um do you want um the cell errors displayed you could do that and how they're going to be displayed but it has to be still formulated as a formula okay also in the same area you can go to the page setup you can do the same thing here uh, portrait and landscape fit uh, one page by one tall which is normal um let's see go to margins i usually um, minimize the margins unless i'm gonna have a header or a footer and so my top was i usually put it at 0.5 and then the bottom i go to 0.5 but then i try to do a footer sometimes you can also center it on pay on the page center center it however you want there okay and then you can do a header and a footer so what's neat about the header and footer is it's a little bit different than like a word document type header and footer but you can do page one of one you can do it'll pull up um the title of your pay of your sheet. You can do the title of your workbook. You could do the location. You could do your own custom footer. Um, so left side, center, or right side. Okay, you could add that information um, on here. So you could do like insert the page number, space of pages. And then, and then you can put a date if you want to. Um, I think the time. I think this ends up the file name, so that's probably not what we want. But maybe the sheet name or the tab name, that kind of thing. And that all that will be added to it. Um, now you can also change the font on that information. Okay. And okay, and so one page one of one name of the tab is main practice. This is also when you go, should I change the name of the tab or should I just name it whatever I want to, you know, um, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, you could do a header, of course, like I said, um, you can um, do different odd and even pages, different first page, etc. Okay the sheet i think we're done and hit okay um and then you can go to file go to print and you can see what it looks like when you go to print okay if you don't like how it looks you can immediately go to page up, page setup on the left and format it some more the quickest way for most people just so you know on most situations for me is um i'll repeat the top line and then I go over fit sheet on one page, but I do fit all columns on one page. And so it fits all the columns on one page, no matter what my other sheet does. And then it just repeats that top row for me, if that makes sense. And then of course you can print it as a PDF or you just leave it like that. And then whoever gets it has the option of printing if they decide to print it. And it makes it formatted that way. And what's good about that is that if someone decides to print it, it has that information there and it's a safe thing for you to send out if that makes sense. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. I have one, uh, Mary. Okay. Um, and, and this may not be directly like printing, but it, it kind of is. Um like you sometimes we're dealing with sensitive data. Um, most of the time it goes internally, but sometimes not so much. Um, is there any tools you can you can recommend to try to like maybe if you want to mask names or mask like a special customer id or something of that nature to try to help help with like i guess from a security standpoint um to be honest you just would have to make to what we did i've done in the past is like um if i provided information to somebody that um Let's say I was sending you information, but I had to make sure you received some type of ID per student, okay? But it couldn't be the IDs that we provide the student. You know, I don't wanna do that. Then I would go in and um, replace some of the numbers with different um, symbols, if that makes sense. And then that would change that. 
other than that, there's not much, you'd have to just remove the information. So you could change it up, um, but you can't, you know, there's not a really a safe, it's like social security numbers. You can't send those, you know? And so um, if you have to send some type of ID um, to uh, be a special ID, but you don't want it to be matching what's in our, you know, in your system, then you would, my only suggestion would be to replace all the sevens with a star or and replace all the eights with a number sign, you know, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? It, it does. Thank you. But that's, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, now, you know, there's protected, you can protect your spreadsheets, but that's not going to protect what your data has, you know, with, with the information. It's just, it's there, you know. So protect it would just be like where you can't, um, like you, somebody can't change the information in the file. So I hope that helps. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Could, I, <clears throat> could I take 30 seconds to say something philosophical and useless? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uselessly philosophical. Um, that's where, to me, that's where spreadsheets start to show their weakness is when you're talking user roles and masking data and whatnot. And it becomes more um, a, a need, a driver to move towards something like Power BI or database based reporting because you know who the user is and you know what they're uh, you can segment what they're um, they're allowed to view. Um, I don't know if there's if there's a way to do that when you're pulling the data, like in a SQL query, um, knowing who your audience is going to be, if you can go ahead and filter it before you even look at it. I, I don't know. But to me, that's what spreadsheets are great for an individual tool. That's that's the only that's as far as I like to take them in this course or that I even think about them because there's just so many reasons why they are weak for sharing data compared to 21st century tools. And that's just my uselessly philosophical side note. Yes, I completely agree with that. I definitely do. Um, anybody else have any questions about printing or anything related to what was just asked? Okay, well, um, the next thing we're gonna work on is match or VLOOKUP. And this is a little complicated, um, but the good thing about it is, is when you're looking, the whole point is when you're looking at two different spreadsheets or two different sets of data, but they have a common um, special ID or a common denominator, if that makes sense, um, on both sets of data, um, then you can compare information on the pages. So if you have, let's say, student IDs on two spreadsheets, um, then I can look up, you know, let's say I have names on one spreadsheet and I have uh, phone numbers on the other. Well, I can use match or um, be look up to pull over the data to one or the other information or just be useful to know if somebody's on a page or not. Okay, so we're going to look at that. So I'm going to, so we're going to look at this spreadsheet. It's hard to do this. It's very hard explaining VLOOKUP. So um, we're going to try for VLOOKUP first and then we'll go to match. So VLOOKUP is going to pull over specific um, item. Okay. So we're looking at this spreadsheet and you can see we have an ID number, which is the most useful tool. Um, usually if you have an ID number, there's not going to be, um, multiple ID numbers, if that makes sense, um, that are, um, you're not going to have the same ID number for someone different, if that makes sense. So you'll have every ID number be for someone, for a different person. Um, and um, now every once in a while, I've had situations where ID numbers are not part of it. So it might be like, so for us, um, and I know a lot of y'all don't work, probably none of you work out of college, but um but for us, we have our course code numbers and the course code numbers um, are special, but they're not special enough that includes the term information. So I'll add the course code number and a term comment to the column together to make a special ID to format, to bring data across for it, if that makes sense. So I'm making, you can make special things. You just have to know you have to be aware about what's special between each item. Okay, so, and, and if none of the, if something doesn't make sense, please just ask, because it's very difficult to explain that sometimes. 
um, and, and I have to go about it different ways, um, usually when I'm teaching. So, and usually I'm showing uh, other people working on it at the same time. So I apologize. So, okay. So we're looking at the spreadsheet. You can all see my um, green circle, correct? Is that still showing up correctly? Yep. Good. Okay. I'm going to move over. Okay. So we're looking at this spreadsheet and we have the ID of 101 for this customer here, okay? On this other spreadsheet, the VLOOKUP2 number, we have the technology column and the sector column, but you see we still have the ID numbers and a customer name. So what we're gonna do is I wanna pull over the technology information and the sector information. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can take a risk and do it wrong and filter by ID number and copy and paste it over to the other spreadsheet. However, that would be wrong, okay? Because you don't know if you have every ID number in line properly, okay? So in this way, this is kind of keeping you from making a mistake. Um, so we have ID 101, and over here, we will have an ID 101, okay? So back to here, we're gonna look for the sector. So <clears throat> VLOOKUP is how we're gonna do this. We're going to do the equal sign and then type in VLOOKUP tab. What you're going to look up is the ID. So we're going to use the A5 cell because that is where we're starting. We want to stay in line with the ID we're looking at. We're going to hit a comma. Then we're going to go look for the information on the other location. So we're going to look at the information we're going to pull over. We're going to go back to the other tab and we're going to highlight from the ID, the special information we want to use, all the way to the information we're going to pull over, okay? So we've highlighted ID and all the information we want to pull over. We're not pulling over all of that, but you have to get to that column and have it all together, okay? So comma, then we're going to count which column we're going to bring. So we were on the sector column earlier, so we want to bring over the sector information. So this is going to be A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4. Okay, so column index number, which is right here, is going to be a 4, comma, and you'll always do exact match, which is false. Okay, so you'll type in false, or sometimes you can double click on the false tab. Okay, so I know that looked complicated. So you're using VLOOKUP, you're going to the row and column. So the row that you're wanting to, the, the column with the ID, click and get, comma. Then you're going to the new tab, highlighting the comma, the columns, all the columns together. Then your comma, and then you're choosing which, you're, you're counting up how many columns you want. I mean, to the one that you're wanting to pull over, okay? So. So this is pulling over here. And, um, and so now you see that it pulled up some of the information. It didn't pull up all the information. So I'm going to show you why. Okay, we're going to filter this, these, this information by highlighting the row, the top, the row that the headers are on, going to home and filter. Okay. And all of the columns that have a zero, okay? All of the, sorry, rows that have a zero. What that means is that they're, they're in the other spreadsheet that they don't have a sector, okay? So they're on the spreadsheet, but they just don't have the sector, okay? If you check out the, I'm gonna unclick those, go all the way down to the NAs. The NAs mean, they're they're not on the other spreadsheet at all like at all so if you're wondering who's going to be on that spreadsheet or not these people these customers are not on that spreadsheet so we're, we're missing them off the spreadsheet okay and i'm going to show you another trick to work with them as well so we're going to try technology okay so equals v lookup the id the special id for that row comma, go back, go to, and when you hit comma, you can see over here, it's asking for the table array, array, 
you're going to go to your your other page highlight from the id to the other column and you can go past that column so you can always go past it if you want to um you're just going to count up to it though so we've gone to it we're going to hit comma it's asking for the index number so how many columns one two three so the third column see right there three and then comma and false oops sorry spelled it wrong it will tell you that too <clears throat> okay we're pulling the technology i don't have anything actually filtered out so i'm going to double click it and let it go down okay all right so these zeros you know like some of this is coming up as numbers so these zeros are the ones that are on the other page but they do not have a technology call, uh, item in the technology column, okay? The NAs are not on that page, okay? Anybody have any questions about that? Well, and shut me down if, if I'm going off the deep end here. But I understand saying, you know, in col return column three, that's what I'm looking for, technology or sector. That, that's what I want to bring back mm -hmm. as, a, as a return value from the VLOOKUP function. What one thing, one thing that confuses me about this, and, and Mary-Kate, I, I came into spreadsheets 15 years after I got into IT and was a database developer and all that and just never really used spreadsheets at all. And so I come at it from a complete, and, and, I'm, and I'm a programmer, so I'm procedural and all that, and the whole graphic approach to things, you know what I mean? So I'm coming at spreadsheets completely backwards from, most people start there, right? You know, uh, and then then learn programming. And But I've got a learning disability. So when I look at a VLOOKUP, okay, one thing that's confusing me is you, you told it the very first parameter is in is the the ID field in the, the look up this, the very first parameter. And then when you go and select the range, it happened to have ID in the first column. Is that a prerequisite? Does it, it have it to be has, the first column? It doesn't have to be the first column on the page, but it has to be the first column that you grab. So let yeah, me so it's got to be the leftmost column of the selection. Right. You can that's have where VLOOK these... says, Nick goes and says, okay, now look in the first column of the selection and you have to, re and you have to select at oh. least over to the thing that you're returning. Right. Right. Yeah. See, I even, for me, um, I even do this. I'm going to, this is going to throw you all off, but this is what I'll do. Let's say I'm just trying. So I, one of the things we were going to talk about was match, which is is it in the other page is really what matches. Match is just checking, is it in the other page and which row is it on? But I don't always use match. I'll use the VLOOKUP because, VLOOK because it's what I'm used to using all the time. So VLOOKUP for this ID, comma, back to the page, highlight that one or highlight 15, it doesn't matter. So let's say you're highlighting that one column, comma, one, comma, false. And then it's pulling over those IDs just because that's the one I chose. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is your overall question? You just want to know about that first. Yeah, column? that that cured a lot, but it it's going to re, it, it would it'll require me using it, and it's not something I do frequently. But what I need to do to get my brain wired correctly is something similar to are you familiar with a table join in SQL? Uh, in, yes, yeah. In the where call, yeah. I need to. I need because what to me what this is useful to be would be a lookup, um, where you have a, a parent child table. You know what I mean. You have a detailed table, um, and you're and you're filling in for whatever reason. You're filling in detail information into the the parent uh, spreadsheet, and it would be a lookup to match, you know what I mean? Like, like the join uh, in the where clause in a join, in a table join. And, and it's possible 
you know, like I, I'm not, I'm not a sequel person. You know, I, I can look at information and understand where it's kind of like when I see, when I, um, with our, how do I say this with our program at the college? Um, I don't create sequel or anything. I don't do script, but mm. our IT person does. And I work with him and I can read when he does it. I'm like, Oh, I know where, what you're doing. You know, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, like so any language you can read it, but you can't necessarily. Right. right. Like yeah. I can read it, but I can't say <laughs> or type it up very well. Gotcha. Um, however, uh, what I was going to say is from what I understand, there is a little bit, you know, as you get deeper into Excel, there are more things you can do if you know things like SQL or, you know, script writing and stuff like that. Um, you just would have to um, learn how to dig deep inside of Excel. That's just not something I've ever done. So um, it's a possibility that you could do that. Like, like you're saying, make your sheets like that and do your own script writing related to it. I'm just not sure exactly how that would go and where to point you in that direction, if that makes sense. That's probably like super, super, super advanced Excel. Um, I do know that when you make macros, you do write a little bit of script writing in it. Um, uh, and so it might be related to that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just, uh, I wanted to be able to understand that V lookup. And I, I think I get it now. The column that you're looking for is the, the left-hand one. And you've got to, I, I think I get what, what, what it's using the selection for and right. how, how it interprets. I, I, I got it. So I think you're trying to, um, I think I need you to dumb it down a little bit, Don. I need yeah. you to say a little bit more. <laughs> like I said, I, ah, anyway, yeah, my brain you just does start not. start with Excel. Yeah, exactly. If you didn't, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. There's because... something horribly wrong with me. <laughs> it is the opposite of what um, most people do. So I completely understand it's harder because you're wanting to make it harder when it really isn't. Um, and that's one of the hard things when I try to teach people is like, it really isn't that hard. You just have to remember that on both situations, your IDs are very, you know, the, the matching information, the matching ID, the special ID is very important. It has to be on both pages. And then the beginning of, you know, you're using that from both pages. So, yeah. Um, Anybody else, else have any questions about that? And I'm going to show you match next. Hey, Mary. Yes, yes. I have two. Uh, the first question is, have you, in your experience, seen any use case scenarios for the true as opposed to false function when you're, when you're uh, going through the VLOOKUP? So when you do true, um, I'll show you what it says. So if you see what it says, it says approximate match. Uh, I don't know exactly what it would look at. Everything I've read is don't do true. <laughs> um, it, it might be that, um, you know, if you're look, I don't know when to, you would want to use true unless you were just trying to verify. I really don't know. I'm trying to think of a way. So let's like, okay, how about this? Let's say a customer's name. Um, and let's say they're very, very different names on the main line. Okay. So this one where it says stamina, um, I'm just, uh, so this one here that says stamina number one, if you only had one stamina and then you only had a v via systems Canada, you know, and it was just those two in very, very different customer names you probably could use customer name as your ID and look up with true because it would be very, very different, hopefully. And you might can make that work, if that makes sense. But these 0101102, my concern would be that's a lot of similarities and it would pull over somebody else's information. So let's try it out and I'll, we'll see how that goes. So let's go with true here and I mean back and forth it kind of pulled stuff over kind of didn't I'm guessing it might have something to do with you know how it's reading it it's pulling the first thing that's similar over 
Does that make sense? It, it, it does. It does. Okay. That's what is, popped is into my what, head is what what if it finds more than one match, it returns the first one. Right. Which, yeah, which, okay. which is my which is the concern, right? Which, which is the whole point. It's it's not the exact match. So you don't want that. Yeah. Um, in this situation. Um, also, since you just brought that up, Don, <laughs> um, you would want to make sure your data, uh, what you're pulling over when you're doing this, is you only have, you know. Like, like I've said a few times today, you want to know your data. You want to know what you have. You want to know what your questions are and what your final answers are. So in this situation, if I had more than one of these here, then I know that would be a concern. Okay, well, if I had more than 101, more than one, one 101, there we go, more than one 101 ID, then my concern would be which one do I want to pull over? And it will pull over the first line, okay? So you would want to filter for that um, and organize by that and sort for that. Um, not filter, but sort for that, sorry. Um, that gets more complicated. Um, and I can go really deep into that too. Um, but, you know, to it is pulling over that first line of your special information that's on your other file. Um, so you got to be careful with that as well. Any other questions? And if you want me to show you more, I can, because I do have more um, things I can show on that. Okay, does anybody want to see some more VLOOKUP? We'd have one other thing I can show you on it. So there is an option like um, if error is a if then thing. Uh, if then look kind of like we were doing if uh, sum if earlier in count if if error is one um and if i do it right this is if error you add it to the um i don't use it a lot so i have to remember to do it right and then if error value if error so comma so you're going to do if error and then in parentheses, the VLOOKUP formula, and then at the end, a comma, and then whatever you want it to say. You say um, no sector. And that should, it is not what happened. Please do this. Let's see, forgot a, call, a parenthesis, sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if error, so if any of them that say that were the NAs, they will not say NA anymore, they will say no sector. Okay, and that helps. So like if you got into a habit of using VLOOKUP on a regular basis, and you were trying to make up a, um, a table or something that really quickly for somebody, um, and you remember the if error option, you can do that instead of having the NAs. For me though, I just go back and put what I want in the NA spot instead, if that makes sense. But I wanted y'all to see that option as well. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all real quick the um, match option. So let's say in this case, like I was telling you earlier, I just used I just used to be look up to look up to see if the they it was on the other file. Okay, when I when I did this right here, um, all I was doing was using the IDs to compare to against each other, and I know that all these NAs are not on the other spreadsheet. So you can also do match. So we're going to do equals match. Match looks up just the ID number and tells you. So you're going to do match equals the cell that you're looking at for, the cell information you're looking for, comma, and then the column, comma, oh, sorry, yeah, comma, and then we're gonna do exact match for zero, in parentheses, enter, and it will tell you the row that that ID number is on on the other spreadsheet, okay? So once again, let's try that again. So match equals the ID, the, for that row that you're sitting on, okay. Uh, then the then you go and look for 
the the spreadsheet that you're looking you want to look at the spreadsheet you want to look at which is the vlookup2 which column you want and highlight it completely the whole column and then you're going to choose exact match web zero okay anybody have any questions about that okay Did, awesome go ahead I'm sorry Mary Kate. no you're fine you're That's fine funny the uh yeah, I'm the one with the most questions. Uh, that right. V lookup, did that pop in there automatically? Because all I saw was you mouse clicking. This, yeah, so that's because it's the name of the tab. It pulls ah, over the name of the tab. Duh. I was afraid I'm, you were somebody, I was going to say, I was like, I wonder if anybody caught that. I saw a V lookup <laughs> so, yeah. there and I'm thinking the it's the function with some weirdness, but okay, gotcha. It's, 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 it's the, just it's the, the tab sheet. name, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, uh, sorry if i had realized that if i no, thought about that i would have named i don't it mind else. embarrassing myself in front of everybody and recording it for his story and this is going on youtube too so yeah great but you but you're asking the questions which means you're you're reading it and that that's the important thing uh, you know a lot of times it's just automatic and it is kind of automatic once you get used to it but you still have to know what you're looking for um or you can't do it so that's important that you're asking that because it will pop up like that. And then you, if you, if there's something wrong, you have to be able to read it to go back to fix it. And if you can't read it, like right now, I have a coworker that has asked me, I guess next week or something, I'm supposed to go and look at his spreadsheets. They have tons of formulas on it. And part of it is he is not able to go back and review and figure out where everything is. And you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to read what your, what your formula is saying. And that's that question. What where does that VLOOKUP come from? Well, it's because it's the tab the tab name. Well, if you didn't know that, you wouldn't be able to fix it. So if there was something wrong, so it's the important. bottom line, match returns a row number. <laughs> yes, so if you feed sorry. it the right parameters, match returns a row number. <laughs> got, no, that's fine. <laughs> Chris had asked about match and index. Um, I'm, I, are you prepared to cover index or? I don't know about index. Then I, don't I'm don't sorry. sweat it. We'll uh we'll we'll cover that ourselves. <laughs> okay. But match okay. returns a row number. Yes, a row number. That's correct. That, that you can use subsequently in in another function or formula. Yeah. Okay. Right. You can just go to that page and look uh, that sheet and look it up if you need to. So uh, okay. So there's that. Um, all right. Next, I'm going to go over pivot tables. Um, we're getting close. So do you want to take another break now, Don, or do we want to just push through? Am I going all the way to 12? I'm just asking. So um, well, we're scheduled to 1230. So it's really okay. how, you know, how, how you're doing. I, I can't uh, talk for lengthy. How much more do you want to go through? And we can, we can keep doing spreadsheet stuff and I can cover charting uh, okay. next week. Um, why don't we get some feedback as to what, what, what are our options for the next 45 minutes or so? Mary Kate, as far as what you want, what what you can, right. we're going to do pivot tables. I think is would be right. That's my next thing. Um, and 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 the part is like you know, it's really. I'll be honest, y'all. It's really hard when nobody asks questions. So I'm glad Don's <laughs> asking questions. Um, <laughs> I know you feel like you're talking to yourself. I know. Well, and it's hard to you know make sure that I'm going slow enough because when you're teaching in a class, you show and let them try yeah. that kind of thing. So it's a little bit more difficult. Sure, um, but we're we're recorded here, so if anybody has any yeah issues um but yeah go ahead and move on to pivot tables if anybody needs to take a break just take a break and uh mary kate uh why don't you just to finish up what you were going okay, to so, do with uh so with, just do pivot tables and stop uh that's probably i think that's realistic okay okay all right we'll continue with that okay um all right so i have another file Okay. Oh, related to that, we'll go ahead and show you how to do a table. Um, we were talking about that earlier. Um, so we were talking about another option is to format your information into a table format. So if you highlight um, all your information, and I was using the control shift, and let's say you want it into a actual table format, I'm going to show you that real quick. You can go up to um, insert and then click table. And then my table has headers. And if you've already highlighted it, you're good to go. If you didn't highlight it, you gotta now put in highlight it, okay, at that time. And then hit okay. And now it's formatted into a table. And 
And if you know anything about formatting, it's the same thing as um, formatting some other stuff in Excel. If you have any questions, just let me know. But it puts in the filtering option automatically in a table if you decide to do a table. And um, uh, like Don said, he'll probably talk to you a little bit more about that as well. Um, but it, is, it does group it. And you can also call your table a specific name. Um, so then whenever you're doing formulas and stuff like that, it'll review, it'll relate back to that table name instead of just the column or um, just the column number. Okay, okay so we're going to go to this. Um, yeah, we're going to go to this um, spreadsheet, um, uh, uh, this workbook, sorry. I call it, it's called Pivot Tables Training. So if you're following along, that's the one you're going to now. Um, so we're going to to do a pivot. So the point of a pivot table is to you're going to have all your data in a certain way. And let's say you're one to ask some questions. OK, so some of the questions could be how many rows do you have that you need to work on or how many of one date do you have or how many rows you have for the month of January or how much volume was bought in the month of January in this situation um, or, you know, that kind of thing. So your data, depending on which, how your data is set up, will depend on if you can use a pivot table for it, okay? But it's the questions that are the key. What questions can you answer with pivot, pivot table? Okay, so we're going to try this one and show you. I'm going to highlight the information that I want to be in the pivot table, which is everything, okay? You also have to have a header for every item. So if you don't have a header, at the top, you have to have something there. So I don't care what you call it, but no, it's best that you know what you called it, if that makes sense. You're gonna go up to insert, insert, and then click pivot table. This is where if you didn't highlight it, now you can highlight it. And I prefer putting them on a new worksheet. It makes life a little bit easier for me. Um, now you can put it on the exi exi existing worksheet, but then you gotta choose where you're gonna put it. And then you still can't see everything. So I always say new worksheet. Hit OK. OK, so we're going to look at this, 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 this data information here. We have the center names, the date, the year, the month, the week, the day, the weekday, and, and volume. OK, I'm going to go back to my pivot table. Now I'm going to pull down. Um, this is our pivot table fields. You have a filter option here. You have a column option. You have a row option and a values option. OK. So if you pull the center, grab like a uh, uh, mouse click on it, grab it and pull it down to rows, you will see these show up in the row labels, okay? If you grab the center and take it to columns, you'll see them grow across the top, okay? We're gonna put them down in rows. And then let's say I wanna see just the total volume. Doesn't matter about anything else, but the total volume, okay? So we're going to take the volume and drag it to the values. Right now, it's coming up with the sum of volume. Okay. The key with that is that depending on what you have in the column will depend on if you need the sum. Okay. So as we were talking, IDs. Let's say a student or employees have ID numbers. Okay. You don't want the sum of the ID numbers. You would want the count of the ID numbers. So to change that, you would go over here to the values area. There's a drop down menu. Choose field value field settings and then choose count and hit OK. So in this point, there's 730 counted volumes, like rows of volumes, basically. OK, now. Um, we're going to keep it, we're going to turn it back to the sum because that makes sense in this situation. Okay. And then we're going to go um, by the year. And I'm going to change, let's take the year and put them in the columns. Okay. So now you can see for 2014, this, these are the sum of the volume for those specific um, centers for that year. Okay, and then there's a grand total. Let's say you um, want to know only the sum of the volume for the years 
but only for a specific weekday, okay? We're gonna drag weekday to filter, do the filter option. And I have no idea why it come up that way. So let's go back over here to here. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Okay, I did not know that. So what they did was they formatted weekday in a special format. So one would be Sunday, two would be Monday, okay? So we're going to say only for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, for, the, for Wednesday and hit okay. So now we are looking at Wednesday, Wednesday sums for each of those centers per year. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, another thing you can do is, let's say you just want more information about the volume. Right now we have year. So I'm gonna take the year off, get rid of it. We still have some of volume. You can grab the volume again and put it underneath it. And you can change that the value field setting to count and hit OK. You can do it again. And you can change that value field setting to a grand percent, percentage of grand total. You can do different things and you can have multiple columns related to the volume. So if somebody's wanting the percentage, if somebody's wanting the sum, if somebody wants the count, if somebody wants the average, you can go ahead and set all that up in that table. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Um, okay. I'm gonna think what else I have to do. I set a lot of this up for y'all to play with. Um Okay, um, I think what else? Okay, I'm gonna also show you another technique you can use. It's called slicers. So on the insert, I'm sorry, not on the insert tab, on the pivot table design tab or analyze tab, I apologize. The pivot table analyze tab. You have to click on the pivot table to get this to pop up. Kind of like when you look at a picture, it has its own design or thing. So you have to do that on the pivot table. So analyze tab, there's an insert slicer. A slicer is kind of like a filter um, for the table. So let's say we're wanting to do um, year, okay? Let's say we only wanna look at a specific year. You can choose 2015 or you can choose 2014 or you can click the, you can do all of them or you could do blank only. Okay. And it's just a way to do it. It's it's kind of unique. It's kind of fun, especially if you have multiple items you want to filter and be able to look at different ways when you're trying to show a presentation or something. Um, but you don't have to do that. Okay. So we're going to remove that. You can right click and remove your Back to, let's show you some other, let me show you some other things. Um, um, if for some reason you have to edit your pivot table, I mean, your, your information, your data, you realize you look at your pivot table and we're like, why does it look like that? That looks stupid. Or um, here, I'll show you. Or like, That's not popping up. Oh, I know. Sorry, I'm trying to clear my filters. Okay. So you notice that you have a random row, a random center that's named wrong. So let's say you need to fix that. So go back to your tech, your information, update it. Go back um, to your pivot table. 
up to pivot table, analyze and click refresh and it will update everything. Now, if you have stuff filtered, like I did a second ago, what it did was you can see it because it was not filtered for that. Um, but yeah, when you hit refresh, it'll update it and add it to it. Okay. So for design, I wanted to show you all some more stuff on here. So right now you were seeing, um, uh, because there's multiple volumes, some of count up and other sum of right here. I'm gonna remove a couple of those. Okay, so um, let's see. And we're gonna add, there you go. So we've added the weekday to the columns, okay? And um, we've added, the, it has a grand total line and then the row has a grand total line. I mean, rows and columns have grand total lines, okay? So I, let's say I don't want the grand total because maybe it's not useful for many reasons. So you'll go to the design tab and go to grand totals and you can choose which way you want it to be turned off. So let's say I want to offer both, okay? If for some reason um, you have blank rows, you can remove blank line after each item. Report layout. Report layout has different versions. Tabular form is a little bit more blo blocky. Um, outline form probably depends on how it's processed. You have to just look at that. You can table it too. You can make it more formatted like a table, add some banded rows, remove them, headers, that kind of thing. So you're formatting it. You can choose a different format over here as well. Okay. Um, so another thing you can do is right now you're looking at center only. Let's say you want to look at um, the weekday over with the center or the center under the weekday, that kind of thing. You can move those around. You can also remove um, grand uh, subtotals as well from those. Okay. Let's do, uh, I'm going to go back to this page here. I'm going to show you a pivot table with it. Okay. Insert pivot table. Let's say student ID and column and student ID. Okay, so one thing you can do when you look at this file, there are, it's, we have a term, we have a student ID, and um, we have some other information um, related to if the, with their gender, their race, um, their majors are, um, but one thing you can do is when you go to the, the pivot table, you, have, you can place the, let's say you're looking at each student, you wanna see what each student is. So you can do a student ID, you can do um, the count of male or female, you, you, the count of the ID, and then use the male or female column, okay, as your columns. You can also um, do it like this, where you put the male or female as a row, option above the ID. You can also change your the major description and you can remove the ID and you can take the gender and put it under their, the description. So now you know how many counting students are female. Okay. Related to that, you can also do uh, the race and ethnicity. So you can do um, how many accounting students are Asian and female. How many are um, adult health nurse practitioners, white and female kind of thing. So this is where it gets really nice and interesting to be able to use a pivot table to dig into reports and information. Does anybody have any question about that? Okay. Um, Don, did you want to say anything? Well, I think you cover it, but I don't know if you're going to, if you're going to have time and that's okay, the nature of not all data is good for a pivot table. I've, I've had people try to 
to use a pivot table, like they had a list of, I do a little project with uh, states. So you'll have, you know, Alabama through Wyoming and then attributes of each state. So you've basically got a unique row. Right. And that's not what pivot tables are for. Pivot tables are when you have repeating data that you want right, to group grouping. and summarize. Yeah. So, yes. um, and, and depending on what you're doing, you can still do that. It's just that you, you, you would only use like count of state in your value and your row might be like, if there's a categorical variable that you would summarize, like uh, whether or not they are a right to work state or legal cannabis or whatever category, you know, you're, you're counting. Um, it's just, uh, and, and I'm, I, I would imagine these folks know, but it's, it's worth noting that not all data, data is pivot table pivot table pivot table yes definitely i actually um so i wish i had a version of this created because this was a challenge for me we had a survey created and um the idea of the survey was to find out information about the student and then the idea is was to group the students by um you know but but they how do i say this find out information about the student however the student um, we needed to keep the information where they could contact each student. So that was one version. And then we also had to group the information. And the, the questions weren't single question answers. There were multiple choice questions. And so, and I do a lot of surveying. I used to, I don't do it like I used to, but I, um, I was a big, I was part of the surveying group at the college. And so it, when you have multiple choice questions, what happens is you have to, you, if you group them or you put them in a, in a spreadsheet, it will pull wrong. It will look wrong because it will look like you had 400 students reply to a question when you only had 30 reply with 10, you know, or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And so you have to remember to review your data and really know what you're doing with it. Like you said, grouping it right is very important. And so when we were working on that survey, Part of that was explaining, you know, this will look like this if you format it this way. You can't say that it's there were 400 answers related to this, but not 400 students answered the questions. And it also depends on how you respond, you know, that kind of response as well. So, gotcha. um, I know that sounds complicated. I wish I had a version of it so I could show it. I might try to do that one day. Um, does anybody else have any questions? And like you said, you know, if it's one person per row like this, um, go back to the, so in this situation, it's one person per row, it's unique information in one column, but then you have other columns that have different information, but unique per column. So in this situation, you only, you know, you have a few degree, you know, information about degree seeking, you have part-time or full-time, you have a gender, you have a race. Um, now, if you try to group all this and put them in a column mixed together, that's not going to work. It's not going to be your the way to format that properly. So um, being very organized with your data um, and thinking about how you're going to present your data is part of a very, very big key related to, um, to pivot tables. You can also, and when he goes over charts, since I wasn't able to do that today, I will show you this real quick. <clears throat> you can create charts as well. So, um, so we go. In, insert recommended pivot chart. Ah, there you go. Yeah, right there. Um, so here's a recommended over here, pivot chart or pivot, pivot table, recommended pivot table. So pivot chart, and you could try to figure out which one would work best. In this situation, I have multiple things, so it wouldn't be a smart idea to do it. But um, let's, uh, here, we'll do this. That's way too much stuff. Ginger. There we go. The pivot chart chart. There we go. Okay, you got a pivot chart. And then you can still change things. You can um, remove the blanks. You can um, you know do some other things with it as well. Um, just like you would with a chart. Um, you can take this one off and do race. And it just suggests that it, it's good, like for if you're doing a presentation and you know what you're wanting to work on or show people, 
you can, and then you know what you're doing at the time, you can move that around and see what's available. It's too many. And that's another thing. If you know you have a lot of differences, something like majors, that's that's a ton for a table, you know. Um, so and for a chart, so you'd want to be careful with that. Okay. okay, any questions related to that? Okay, Don, I mean, I could go more with charts, but other than that, unless someone else has any more questions. Um, oh, one more thing, real quick. I'm sorry, I thought about this. I try to give y'all tips. That's really my biggest thing. Um, real quick, uh, down here at the bottom, some people don't know this. But down here at the very, very bottom, when you highlight a uh, column, um, it'll come up with some information for you. You can right click on that and you can choose what items are down there. You can choose average, count, numerical count, minimal, maximum, or sum. And um, so right now, the count of information on, those co on that column is 39, but there's only 38 items on that column that actually have numerical numbers in them. Um, and then if you were adding them up quickly, there's your sum, and then there's your average. So for some people, it's very, very nice to have that. And some people, it's not. So I, I like never that. noticed so that. Yeah, it's it's useful for me. Like if you're just trying really quickly to find out how many, you know, the count is 39 yep. really quickly at the bottom. So, okay, that's all I had. There you go. Well, there's uh, so much more we could cover. Uh, Excel does so many things. There's a, a statistics um, add-in pack, and then there's the analyze data tab, and uh, there's a forecast worksheet that'll take like annual quarterly data and then start doing projections uh, based on whichever model you want to do. There's just so many things we can do with Excel, and we'll probably touch back on them uh, as we go through the course, but I think now everybody's got a uh, fair, fair shot. <laughs> everybody's got a common baseline of doing a, a free form um, data analysis uh, project, which is what we're going to work on. Um, this is Thursday, right? Yes. Starting, starting Tuesday morning. And we have uh, two folks joining us uh, that work for a company called Affirma. Uh, will be joining us next week. So I want to, I want to get them up to speed quickly on Monday. And then, so they can, they can join us. Uh, Chris got your, uh, your hand up. Uh, yes, sir. Mayor Day, I have one more question for you. Uh, do you mind pulling up that, uh, your, your pivot table one more time? Sure. I just need help kind of ironing out kind of a common issue. I'm ready to see sometimes. Sure. Give me one second. Yes, ma'am. I move stuff around for a second. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, pull up. The... Okay. All right. What were you wanting to ask? Which one did you want to look at? Sorry, I should have asked that first. Let's go to the created uh, pivot. Well, let's go. This one here. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. Well, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, now, now I'm kind of confused. Uh, what, which, which, which spreadsheet? I apologize. Uh, no problem. Um, this one? Yeah, well, we, we can work there. So, okay. so when you created the pivot with, with that data, um, it populated, and I think sheet one, that, that particular tab down there. Uh huh. And so, so we drag and drop those dates that just take date and just drag it into like rows or columns. We'll probably let's do it in rows. You want date and rows, okay? All right. So you see how it kind of populated quarters, years, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I drop mine in there, it doesn't group it right. Like it maybe maybe it's because I didn't um, format the, the data as text or or as date as I should have. But but that that's kind of good to have. Sometimes I just want to look at it from like a quarterly view or just a, just a yearly view. But all the time it doesn't recognize that that the data in that field is a date. And, and uh, like I said, I'm just trying to figure out what do I do wrong back back on back on my data table. Maybe like I said, it's not formatted right, or what's kind of a common issue that that'll cause that. Okay. Um, 
it, it's usually it, the format. So that would be my first thing to do. Uh, if it was me, I would go back to my actual spreadsheet that has the data on it and double check and make sure it's formatted as date. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd also check to see if it looks like this. If for some reason it doesn't look like this, then I would try to make some updates in my spreadsheet, um, okay. if that makes sense. And then refresh and try again. Um, and to be honest, if that doesn't fix it, then I would probably do some Googling to find out what it could be. Um, it could be something related to um, something else that you're, you're not even realizing, if that makes sense. It, it does. So, so one more question about that. So okay. what I have, some weird date ranges that, you know, for whatever reason, somebody wanted to see, they didn't want a perfect quarter, January 1 through uh, the end of March. They wanted January 1st through, I'm sorry, January 15th through April 15th. Is there a way to kind of customize it, customize your group in that way? If it's not like a perfect quarter, or perfect year? So I would, for, I would do another column and yeah. I would format it my own way. So yeah. I would say, um, I'd make a special column and say, you know, for us, that's our, like for the college, we're from July 1 to June 30th. So I would just make a new thing that talks about, that would be about that. So I would name it whatever I'd want it to and, and then focus on those specific dates and make an, you know, add my own column to it. Okay. And I wouldn't use the dates in the pivot table. I would use my special column. Okay. So, so, so with, with that in mind, like with that small little spreadsheet, it may not be a problem going through dragging and sorting, but what yes. if you have a huge, massive one? Is there a quicker way to kind of group by like a little special parameter or whatever? Is there a faster way other than doing it manually? Wait, uh, I'm trying to you, think. <laughs> do you have spreadsheets with like hundreds of columns that you're talking about, Chris, that, are, that it's just really hard to pick from the column that you're dragging into your pivot table? Yeah, uh, and like I said, there, there's there's a time or two when we'll have these special type date ranges. Like, you know, for instance, uh, we want to see something from, like I said, a weird time frame from January 15th to April 15th, as opposed to like year in a month in. And I may have to go in and create that special column, mm -hmm. like Mary suggested. And, you know, I, I, like I said, I know manually I can kind of do my filters and then go in and name them, drag them down. But uh, if it's a ton, a ton of rows, it might take, you know, a considerable amount of time. Well, um, yeah, the number uh, of rows is is independent of creating the table. Okay. It, 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 I mean, it's going to take time, yeah. And, and yeah, if you're working with, you know, close to the, you know, tens of thousands of rows, uh, it will take time. But the the, the number of columns are really what would cause you to have a large list of things to choose from as to what you're dragging down there to be in your row or column or value field, uh, the way I'm visualizing it in my head anyway. Okay. I think he's referring to our special, the special column that, that where he was talking about grouping the dates a different way than what they're yeah. coming out in this file. Yeah, go and back to so that pivot table, Mary Kate, I, that, while I'm interrupting. Mm -hmm. uh, when it automatically populated uh, quarters and years over down down in the lower right hand corner in your pivot table mm -hmm. fields, mm -hmm. drag quarters and date back up so that they're out of the pivot table, and you only have years. Right. He's he's talking it's about still... though, like uh, like from July one to June thirtieth of the next year, and then grouping that in a specific group. Okay. And it's just, I think, isn't that what you're talking about? Doing a special grouping? Yeah, uh -huh. I got you. Okay. Sometimes so pivot tables, it it throws things in there that you did not drag down there. And and it's helping. <laughs> I'm sure, I think it's helping me. Uh, but anyway. Right. The dates are the complicated. But in your situation, I think what I would do, so there's a couple of things. Like you said, you have a lot of rows. Isn't that what you said? Yes. You're going to have like... I don't know, hundreds of thousands of rows or something crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so I would consider doing that um, and or 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 if option that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. where you could do equals um, uh, this greater than, uh, you know, or something like that, trying to figure out what would work for that, if that makes sense. 
it, it, it might be that you might be able to do between dates and then doing a big drag down. And if it's true, true would be your right, you know, double clicking it, let it run by yourself. So you're not having to do multiple information. Mm -hmm. um, does that make, I hope that makes sense. No, but that would be the quickest I could think of besides grouping the dates and doing drag downs for those dates. You know, uh, so instead of going through and removing, you know, specific months and stuff like this gotcha. and grouping them, I would think that trying to figure out how to make a logical function out of it and making a true or false statement would be your um, quickest way. But if you're having to do multiple groupings in one, like if you if, if true and false is not enough, like you need like three or four groupings in one spreadsheet, then that would, you, I just, I wouldn't know exactly what else to tell you on that one. I'm sorry. Um, grouping them hit by hand would probably be the quickest in that case. Okay. Or sorting them. You could sort and then do it grouping. That might be faster for you. Um, sorting it out by the date and then grouping if that makes sense so i know that was a little complicated oh it's, it's fine thank you very good mm -hmm. you're welcome anything else i can help with okay guys well we've got uh those you know the the practice files are in the classroom um everything that mary kate covered and more some uh some cheat sheets and and whatnot um uh and then we have the book you know the we've got that 2000 excel 2019 bible which has a pretty good example of most popular functions there may be something in there um chris did you did you check the 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 book i know there's index and match tutorials on the web i have not yet it might, it might be in there. And sometimes I like that book more than I'm seeing more than I like tutorials on the web, especially since it has uh, accompanying uh, worksheets uh, to go with it that you can go look and, and follow along and, and play with it. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, I'll, uh, I've got a, I've got a, an Excel charting thing I did last time that I'll, uh, that, that I'll give you time to watch. And then we'll do a, uh, a free form. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys want to go to Kaggle or if you have a sport that you follow or uh, like, I, like I'm going to continue on with my, my United States exploratory data analysis. But think of a, of a, of a topic and, a, and a, a data set and, and start looking into that uh, for Tuesday. Um, and then, like I said, we'll be, we'll be welcoming uh, to two new students that just came on board, fresh out of college, just got hired. Um, that'll be continuing with the rest of the class. Well, Mary-Kate, uh, I want to thank you. Um, I'll be in touch via email. If there's no, nothing else for anybody, uh, we'll, we'll reconvene Tuesday morning at 8.30. Thank you, Don. Stay on second floor. Thank you. Uh, I can stay on, sure, Chris. Nobody else? Okay, guys, I'm going to pause record and we'll... Uh, or stop recording, and we'll see everybody Tuesday morning. Thanks, Mary-Kate.